welcome, gentlemen, to uh, Connected by Water, presented by Joey Cardi Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, and fueled by Papa's Pilar Rum. I'm your host, Dennis Friel, and here we are today with our uh, my co-host, right? I'm about to say, I'm becoming your yeah. version of Ed McMahon. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to start holding the strange questions up to my head and guessing what they are. This right? is, what, what like number the, is this? This is episode 83. But, wow. And I've been here for us, six, seven. I think this might be number seven. Number seven on that. I think. And then, according to the contract, if I make <laughs> ten appearances, I get a free piece of art from you, right? $25,000 value? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, there, we're going to have a hard... This is my last visit. So, then. we're going to have a hard <laughs> stop at nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, joining us today is our regular... Um, co-host uh, George Pavaromo, thank you very much. And pleasure always being here with us for the first time, uh, Captain Harry Vernon. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I would like to state for the record, you and I are meeting for the first time, yes. and this also happens to be your first ever podcast that you're doing. And yep. I couldn't be more honored to have you uh, in here uh, in the studio. Don't get crazy, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been told on good authority, Uh-oh. right? That um my good buddy yeah that that, that, that your good buddy says uh you, you guys like to chuck it up a little bit from time to time so oh we do I have to say for full disclosure um that uh, today's guests are here uh, as uh, appearance courtesy of Captain Harry's fishing supply and so there's no um, ambiguity would be the proper word that that George Poveroma would be here on on behalf of Bass Pro Bass Shops. Pro Shops <laughs> so how this works you know. Captain Harry's, obviously, and I've been a long-time sponsor of Bass Pro. So this is like I'm Ford, he's Chevy, in the stock car racing. So he's got to do his thing for his team. I do my thing for my team. But we're such close friends that when the race is over, we go out, have a couple cold beers together. In this case, Papa's Pilar Rum. So yes. have a yep. couple of them anyways. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how it, that's how it should be, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a good thing. We, we have a great time. Absolutely. Plus, you know, we all... Grew up pretty much together in Miami, and mm-hmm. uh, we, got, we got that connection going way, way, way back. And it, it is. It's pretty funny when we get together to do whatever it may be, our seminar series or when Harry is a guest on my television series. Mm-hmm. We have this this unique, natural kind of fun-oriented. Some people would look think that's fun, but some kind of, we had this chemistry that that's it's funny. And um, it's sort of like... You, you're going out with a one of your best friends, mm-hmm. and, and you're fishing hard, and you're fishing seriously, but you've got the whole cut-up aspect of it where, you know, you poke fun at somebody. And, 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 if and you not didn't everybody notice, thinks it's fun. No, because some people think, boy, this, <laughs> you mean. guys are really mean. And, yeah. but, he's but, a mean guy. He's very mean on the boat. <laughs> oh, he's mean to me all the time oh, on the terrible. show. I don't know yeah. what I, what, yeah, don't why I even come up with come back this home. little song he's, he's doing right now. <laughs> but, but he's a good mean. <laughs> I did want to touch a lot on Miami today, just because mm-hmm. you guys are both from there, um, which we don't necessarily focus on that too much. Uh, no, we do, but not as much as we do, say, Pompano. Right. Because we talk about Pompano until we're blue in the face on the show. Cause don't this is don't worry, zero. everybody from Miami is coming up this way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I hear. I, actually, that's what I, I see. I have some neighbors that literally <laughs> just moved here this week. Did they really? From across the street from me, yeah. See all these buildings popping up now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I mean, amazing. that sprawl is coming this way. You can feel it Wait daily. Wait the traffic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm still doing the commute. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, Jim Steele calls me a squinter. <laughs> it's all you're a squinter now, right? Because now that we just we just moved the studio out here a couple right. of weeks ago, I'm like, what do you mean squinter? squinter? He's like, well, you're squinting in the morning at the sun, and when you leave at the end of the day, you're squinting at the sun. <laughs> I, I was wondering what, what, yeah. what you meant by that, but I thought it yeah. was a squatter, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, um, Captain's Harry Fishing, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply yes. has a long history. A long. Down 50, in Miami. 51 years. Mm-hmm. We tried to have a 50-year anniversary, but COVID just messed that up to hell. But Yeah, ruined so many things. It just destroyed it. But it's okay. We'll have, eventually, we'll have a big, big party there and everything. My, my father started back in 1970. Mm-hmm. And uh, he passed away 21 years ago, and I've been trying to Has screw it, it up that ever long? since. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to screw it up ever since. <laughs> That's what everybody tells me. So, yeah. but we're doing all right. We're yeah. doing good. Knock on, knock on wood. It's. It's been phenomenal family business. Yeah, that's great. I mean, really and good. no one could miss it right there off 95. I mean, yeah. you see all the fish on the side yeah. of the building. So, it's so uh, unless you've been living under a rock, building. I mean, you don't know where Captain Harry, Harry's fishing supply is. There's been a few car accidents out there, people <laughs> looking at it. Yeah. So it's kind of 
crazy, but it happens. Yeah, nice. So you grew up fishing in Miami. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Keepins Cain. Born and raised on the little island off of Miami. Okay. And uh, that's it. Fish. If there's a fish in the mud puddle, I'm going for it. It's, yeah. You know, we have fun. So when you when you grew up fishing out there, I mean, you mostly like growing up like inshore or offshore, just a little Both. bit of everything. Well, my father was mainly offshore fishing, mm-hmm. always offshore, offshore, and which is only three miles offshore. Now we have the Biscayne Bay, which is just a block over. So mm-hmm. you got both inshore and offshore right there in front of us, and it's just. And I'm a member of the Key Biscayne Yacht Club, which is great because we have a boat ramp there, and you just put your boat in the water and go either way, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just been phenomenal. Lobster and whatever you want, shrimping at night. It's just it's a killer spot to be. Nice. Do you have any um, film on camera of George sneaking in, maybe buying some stuff on, on at Captain Harry's uh, that you I, might be yeah. able to hold over well, his head for? I, I have bef- for, well, for, for, for some before, blackmail. Before the big guy came in there, and, and w- I was <laughs> one of the sponsors of his show. So he did used to come in all the time, and we took good care of George, and and we'll still help him out if he needs a little bit of help once yeah. in a while, you know. But but I, I probably could blackmail him a little yeah. bit. You know? <laughs> but I, you know, Harry and I have known each other for, I mean, decades. But it really started with his dad. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. back in, uh, shoot, this was uh, 1982 or 83, 1983. I had uh, been brought on to run the Greater Miami Billfish Tournament. Mm-hmm. And Harry's dad was on the board of directors. And I had just started the same year with Saltwater Sportsman Magazine. So I had come on, but I knew his dad before that. And uh, and it's funny how far back you go. They had a shop that was on the Miami River, yep. and I was still, like, in college, and I would commute. I'd leave University of Miami, and I would get ready to fish for the weekend, so I would pull over and get whatever I needed there. This was before the Bass Pro stuff. And, and, then, and all of a sudden, here was this funny little smart aleck kind of a guy behind the counter come out there and talk to me and he was funny he had a sense of humor and and then we chat what are you going for and he joke and this and that and you know you look back and that was harry back then mm-hmm. but i had um the original connection was with his father because i had worked with the miami billfish tournament with his dad and ironically to show you what a small world it is and maybe it's the small miami world but is my hero um um, and still to this day, Bobby Brack and anybody who's out I'm of so Miami. I'm so let down right now. I thought he was going to say me. Oh, no, no, <laughs> You're no. second. Well, right, I, cool. I got to stop for a second. The, the reason why I came out, my father told me to watch this guy. He's been shoplifting, so I got to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby Brack is anyone who remembers South Florida stock car racing from Hialeah Speedway, the winningest late model modified driver. It, 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 it was unbelievable. And then I am good personal friends with Bobby Brack. He used to watch him as my grandfather would take me out to the Speedway. And as the, the years progressed and then I got older and I started hanging out with Bobby, he told me that what, when he found out that I fished and I found out that he fished a bit, he said his hero was his dad mm-hmm. because his dad used to race nice. at Hialeah Speedway. Back in the 50s. And and, and Bobby Brack oh, would tell yeah. me he used to ride his bike past Harry Vernon's race car shop and he said... He used to let me work on the car, so when I started racing, Harry was number 75. So Bobby said, I'm going to pick number 57 because his dad, Harry Vernon, who raced out there, was Bobby's hero. So oh, how wow. weird of a circle is this? Yeah, kind of cool. He had, actually cool. both. He had 57 and 75. Okay. He would have two cars at, at some time. Uh-huh. That, that, and that's, but that's, that's Bobby fun. picked that up. I didn't know any of that about the racing stuff. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Know, I know this Captain Harry is back. Captain Harry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. So I mean, I mean, so you've seen it all Pretty down much. there, down there in Miami. I mean, really, I mean, it's you, crazy how it's changed. And then some, but uh, yeah. Well, well that's leave a, the end some out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about the sprawl coming this way. I mean, you know, take me through a little bit of like both of your guys' points of view on. You know, I guess I should ask this this way: Is you know, South Florida, Miami, and how that's been creeping north over the years, and Maybe how that's affected some of our natural resources and the culture of fishing. Because the culture of fishing, I think, in the last decade or so has really changed a lot as well. Especially when you know, they've got the bigger center consoles really be- becoming a staple now. It was a new thing not too long ago. 
And, you know, that has a lot to do with, I think, you know, the running back and forth of the Bahamas and how that's oh, just really yeah. changed the whole scene. Oh, well, heck yeah. Electronics today, it, it, which I've said, mentioned on his on his shows and everything, it, it, it's like cheating. It's it's so good today. Mm-hmm. The fish don't have a chance. I mean, you go that side scan, sonar stuff, you can see everything. I mean, it, it's crazy what what I have on my boat and, and the stuff that I see. It's it's cheating. I mean, you go out 100 yards this way, 100 feet or f- feet this way, 100 out that way, and just drive around, and you find so much stuff. And then you find a wreck. Then you find the fish. And then you, you can you can pound on it, kill them all, whatever, mm-hmm. let them go, which we recommend today because us back in the day, that's all we did was keep everything. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, it's just – and all the bo- – and there's twice as many boats. And twice. Uh, uh, three or four I'm, times. I've like, never yeah. seen it so And they're bigger, so they're badder. They're, they're, yep. It's incredible. And uh, it's it's changed so much. I mean, back in the day – we use fingers for ranges, you know, go three fingers off of and that, now, you, now you use a finger if somebody gets too close to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. You three fingers off of Fowey Light off the tip of Kiba's cane, that's going to put you on the Pioneer wreck. And, and that's how we used to fish to find these wrecks. Mm-hmm. You didn't have something to give you a GPS number to get you to here and there. You had ranges, and a lot of the guys back in the day would put out stuff, wrecks and stuff, and you try to find their stuff, but... Now you just see a guy on radar, you know, two miles away, three miles away, hit quick save, and you, you got his spot. So it's it's just it's crazy and, how and it and is. What today. about like the radars that we have now? You know, bird mode. We're used to fine tune mm-hmm. the old school radars to try to learn how to pick up the birds. Now you push a button, and you see the birds. So you, you could take a person with little or or no saltwater fishing experience, put them in the center console as long as they know how to drive it. And have this radar system in there, and the electronics, like Harry said, and that person could be be a danger and find the birds, you know, yep. without having to go through all the learning processes you know, that we have. So it's changed. But I'll tell you what has really changed. I've had this discussion with Bouncer Smith for, uh, you know, a, a while. We talk, and and it was uh, last year. And I said, Bouncer, and I said, you know, you see all the people that are fishing. There's more people fishing here than ever before, too, and. And and we got in a talk about how things ha- have changed. And I said, what do you think has been the biggest change? And he said, he says, well, in our era, Harry, mine, and, and all growing up, especially in Miami, he said it was the quality of the catch that was the important factor Ooh. back then. Going out with when they had a six-pound class category, an eight-pound class, you get a 30-pound bull dolphin, an eight-pound spin, that was a hell of a catch. You were judged by your light tackle fishing abilities. And by light tackle, I'm also meaning going out and getting a blue on 30 or 50 pound. It was the, they had the, Met the catch. The Met tournament was the huge. Tournament. So yeah. now he says what happens, he said that whole thing has changed. He said people today when they fish, it's a numbers game. How many sailfish did you catch? How many yellowtails did you catch? How many groupers did you catch? How many dolphin did you catch? It, the quality of the catch that has gone away, and it's all about the numbers. Mm-hmm. How much did you get? That's why I like seeing these tournaments that still count, like heavy fish, as the right. big right. prize of the tournament. Sure. You know that that's that's a great thing that that some tournaments still hang on to that, and it's not just an aggregate thing. Right. You know, like I, five five of them, and yeah, you got to uh-huh. fill four per category, right. or whatever, you know, sure. and it's like you, you want the KDW and all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a certain you know skill set to that but mm-hmm. catching that big fish is still that epic story of catching the big catching. fish oh yeah i got everybody the big one to today i got the, the big one. fish yeah, yeah. everybody who does sure. it? Right, right. Exactly. you want to come back to the dock look what i got you know and uh-huh it's fun yeah you know, back in the day that's all we that's all we would do sure we used to yeah. kill everything which was bad but that's how we were brought up pretty much my dad charter boat fished also that was one of his jobs he worked for eastern airlines charter boat fished and ran boats and it was all about catch, 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 every, because we'd sell the fish uh, to make the money, and the customers obviously would be great because they'd buy fish from you or whatever, and it was just, uh, that's the way it was. Yeah, we, ta- we talked about on the show before about, oh, what's your biggest, most favorite? Someone asked you mm-hmm. that question, right? And you keep bringing up this Wahoo. Right? <laughs> oh, that the 143-pound, six got. ounce. Right. you yeah. you got to have that six ounce added to that. But it's always, to me, that they always say the one that got away 
Yeah. Do you remember? Oh yeah, your one that sure. got away. Still, what, what still was that? pains, pains, pains you to this day. Oh, I'm. I'm I of had mine. one. We had uh, this before the TV show. Obviously, I just had come aboard with Saltwater Sportsman, and I had carte blanche to go wherever we wanted to go to do fishing features for the magazine. So we were in Ecuador to do a marlin feature. I took my buddy with me. And boom, I said, you get the first one because I need to get some pictures to go with the article. And there they kill everything. So he ended up catching a 570-pound black marlin. So they boated it. And then I hooked up next, and we were at 50-pound class. I brought my pen tackle down, hooked up to one that was, I, I, I'd be afraid to even guess how big that thing was, but I would say it had been in the seven eight hundreds. It, it It almost dwarfed what was boated. And they had a fighting chair. And I stood there fighting a the fish stand-up and fought it for probably close to an hour and a half. And here it is. Here comes the leader. And I said, all right, we got this fish. And I'm cranking. And a mate went to grab the leader and didn't put any really undue pressure on it. But the fact that that leader, we were in a fight for so long, had chafed so badly. As soon as he grabbed, boop, and it went away. And looking back at it, so where I made the mistake, instead of trying to be Mr. Stand-Up, I should have taken a chair. Sat down. And yeah. sat, you would be able to apply a lot more pressure early on in the game. You would have probably beat that fish a lot earlier and then had taken a fish. So that was a dumb kind of a, you know, thing. And, and that one still hurts because I could still see the fish. I think the reality is, though, that you probably still could have caught it standing up. But you always then if we had replay, strong, the oh, replay we had all it. the could have, should have, would have in your well, mind. Well, yeah. we had a better, thicker leader. Or, right, yeah. if we had a thicker You're right. Yeah. We had it right there. The mate was going for the leader. Yep. But it was so got away. spent and it got away. That, that, Damn. That, you know, you, uh, you, rem- you remember the one, those fish kind of, they, they, they haunt you. you know? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. You got one. I remember mine. I know exactly what yeah, it is. I, up in high school, this girl, she got away. <laughs> <laughs> she was so hot, man. I tried it. I threw every lure at her. I did. That's it. I just couldn't get her. No. Well, what, one that. The way there's the spots and yeah, the bars oh, that would yeah, light up when she would walk yeah, by, yeah, right? Yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> but, that, that, but that was a long time ago. A couple weeks. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, my my thing that I I mean I've had a few, but being in the tackle business and teaching people how to swordfish, I would teach oh, yeah. someone how to swordfish. They would go out and catch one. I would go out and not catch one. I knew how to catch it. I knew rigged. I knew exactly what to do. I'd go out again and not catch one. Now the guy'd come. I teach him how to catch a swordfish. He'd come in. Look at this three hundred pound swordfish, Harry. But I was like, God, I hate you. you <laughs> I can't. God, and I still haven't caught one. I went over fifteen <laughs> times. And had never caught a swordfish. So finally, I was putting the lines out. Sun was still up. It's going down. And I'm literally rips out of my hand. And this swordfish comes up. And, the, and I was like, holy shit. Look at the size of this. And I'm going to put him at four to 500. Uh, he was probably up to 1,000 a while back. You know, <laughs> but I'd say he's probably four or 500 pound sword. And legit. And I fought him for over three and a half hours. On, on a big black magic stand up, and my next door neighbor, who's never been on a boat, is running the boat. So he's he ran this thing over like six times, <laughs> and I fought it. It starts pouring down rain. It was like glass calm, and I was like, I got to do something. My back's came. I went tighter on the drag and just started cranking him up, and it was cool because he'd come up two hundred feet and strip down to four hundred feet. Come up two hundred. He stayed in that same zone. It was killing me. So after three and a half hours, and I went a little more on that drag, and I ripped the hook out, and he got away. Mm. And it sucked because I saw that fish. I knew it, and it was mine, and I never got him. But I have caught swordfish prior to that, after that. Yeah, I, yeah. I got the monkey or a great white off my back, whatever it was, but it, it was hanging this on to my back. When we had that discussion oh, about, oh. you know, because you're moving when you had these swordfish That's the shit shapes. could have, would have, right? Yeah, that's yeah. where should I could have yep. fought him another hour, back the drag off. But I, I ripped the hook because I came up with some stuff on the hook, even, <laughs> and uh, I was just like, oh, I should have never done that. I just, just. That's when we had the, the debate moment. between circle hooks and J hooks, and naturally because you're you're moving still, it's almost like you're you're trolling. So circle hooks a little bit tougher, but you figured right. if you get a circle hook in a fish, your odds of getting it are so much better. And I had this discussion with Harry at one of the seminars, and I talked about going with circle hooks. 
And he says, I'll, you could go ahead and you take it. You want to yeah, get a J-hooks I, I, after I, that? I, the way I look at it, it got such a bad to the bone fish. I want him to swallow it and get it in his gut so it kills him. Because <laughs> the circle hook is going to go in the corner of his mouth, and it's not going to hurt him, and he's going to be lit the whole time. So you got your hands full for a long time. Right. Now, if it's a smaller fish, great. But if you hook that the one that you've always wanted and your dream fish, you're going to be there forever with a circle hook. Yeah, you want to shoot so a crossbow kinda, at him. You yes. just want to get that thing in the so, boat. So, and I think a lot of people think that way because now you see all these harpoons and casts. Oh, yeah, and yep, it, it's yeah. like snag hooks, the stuff they were using to catch a swordfish. Yep. And, I, and I don't blame them. I, I I did a lot of that stuff just to get that swordfish. But, uh, no, it's it's crazy. It's I'm like, so happy. Fish. I'm so elated that you brought up Titan and the Drag because here's mine. <laughs> one day we went out and it was may right so you know the fishing was yes. good right yep big but fish it was a little sporty that day and um i had a couple of buddies of mine from college one of them had just bought a new boat a 23 Rabalo bow rider he wants to go fishing oh boy right dennis you gotta take me fishing yeah i just got my new boat i'm like all right, I'll take you. You know what I mean? Let's just grab a couple of, like this Rods is back to the Penn Senators yeah. or whatever like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we'll just drag something behind, you know what I mean? And a couple of Dolphin Juniors or something like that. Brig Bally, who old school, right? Like, yeah, we'll just, I'm like, but I said, we're probably not going to be able to last too long today. You know, that bow rider and the sporty, it's not, I'm like, <laughs> just, just, I said, it was just prepping them. I'm like, I don't know how long this is going to last. You know what I mean? So, but we'll go out. We'll go out for a little bit. If you want, you just got your boat, you're really excited and everything like that, right? So we put the baits out. I got, I, I got two mediums and one really long one, right, right, right down the middle, and um, all of a sudden that that middle long goes off, like screaming, screaming. I'm like, oh crap! So I'm on the boat with two guys that eh, I don't know what they're really doing, right? So the fact that you know. Fast forward and then come right back. The fact that I got to rely on one of these guys to gaff this fish <laughs> yeah, is, is a little bit of part. a like, ah, oh, right? So we're reeling it in. And I see this son of a bitch jump, and it is a huge mahi. Huge, oh, oh. right? If you had a guess, the waiter or I'm bar, telling you, guaranteed, and this is no fish story, at least 65. Oh, that hurts. Because wow. I, I know where it's going. That's why it's hurting me. And already. it is like, it's one of those oh. rough day mahis, oh. right? And it lit up blue, and by the time it came, it was green. And it was just the biggest, biggest mahi I've ever seen inside, like the length of a sailfish kind of thing. You wow. know, it was, and it was like, so after a good 40, 45 of getting him to the boat and everything like that, I knew he was going to do another run, and I was expecting it. Like, once he saw us at the boat, yeah. then they always do that dip down. And I was waiting for that, and it happened, and then I was able to get him back up, right? And all I could see is my college buddies holding that gaff. One gaff, right? We probably needed two with those guys, uh. right? But then to trust those guys to do two gaffs, only one gaff on that boat. Right? One's little, one's little silver three footers. Oh, you, know, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, over right? five feet to get to it. <laughs> so my natural instinct was to be like, I'm going to tighten that drag a little oh, bit no. more. Oh no. My instinct was I got scared that they weren't going to, that they're going to try to gaff it. It's going to run on me again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I tightened it not that much, just a little bit. And psh, what broke? Or the hook pulled? No, it, 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 it snapped right at the knot. Oh. It's probably George's knot. Yeah. <laughs> it, it I didn't know him back it then. It snapped, oh, yeah, snapped right at the knot. <laughs> and, oh, um, it's a killer. And then it just... And I tried to get on the boat and crank up the boat and get over there and you know, just to – Was it still and, floundering? And it, it, it was a little bit floundering. So I, I, I would have been I, I I had my go overboard. I had my – I almost did. I really – I had my moment of Wait, depression. Hold on. What would you say? Oh, if a fish that big? Dove, you would have dove overboard? For that fish, I would have done would that. You would never dove overboard. I, for that fish, I would have done that. If it was that close and that big of a fish – you know, I'm I'm the farthest thing from uh, Mr. Uh, no. Scuba Diver here, but uh, I'd always I never get out of my boat involuntarily. You know that. I, that's why. But I say if that, that was that like crit- huge of a fish and that thing was, was <laughs> flounder, I would have been in it. Yeah. That's a good one. But, but by the time I got the boat cranked <laughs> up and started, it was uh-huh. a little bit too deep at that point. It was you know that's horrible. So, yeah, and that, and it, and it, it was really like a and you're with your college buddies and you're thinking. 
we're going to bring home the glory. It's a Saturday. Oh, college football's it, on this it, afternoon. It, 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 we're all going dolphin. back to their house later. Cause to, to, and it's everyone's going to be at the house. Imagine if we brought that big fish home. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. And then, yeah, that's my one that got away. We all have that. And then and there's, there's, some. there's a few. There's, yeah, there is there's, always. I, we lost but, a big dolphin one time. Yeah. Like, but this is way back. And I, my during, in April, we always troll a mullet off the back of the boat. And I had... I'd make these mullet. They were like yellow, just frozen. I mean, just nothing like they make today, man. <laughs> this thing was just had its own <laughs> color. And I rigged it, got it all set. It was more, mainly for blue marlin because we'd have the teaser out the back, and then I had my mullet. This dolphin came up from behind. It, it was it was a monster. I don't know how big it was, but it was probably one of the biggest ones still to this day that I've ever seen, mm. whether it was 65, 85. Wow. I don't know, but it was a friggin' monster. And – my sister was on the boat with us, and my dad said, let Lulu gaff it. He was oh. Lulu's part owner with the store with us uh, at Captain Harry's. And I'm like, Dad, no, no, Dad. And I'm, I don't know, I'm probably 8 years old, 10 years old, and this thing is huge. And she gaffs it, and she can't do anything with this mm-hmm. thing. My dad runs down, and we're in this old wooden boat. That's what I thought was going to happen to these guys. They were going to so, gaff that thing, and it was just going to manhandle well, She gaffed She couldn't pick it up. She could not. My dad finally gets a hold of it. And he's pulling up and coming up and coming up. And I'm like, and I'm telling you, he's six foot tall. And it came back off and fell in the fish box. And I'm like, yes. And all of a sudden, the fish box lid goes flying off. The dolphin goes flying out, breaks the line off the back of the boat. You're kidding me. So you want to talk about real bad luck? I was so, I I don't know if I say if I could say it, but (laughs) I was pretty mad at my dad and my sister. I still don't like them. (laughs) <laughs> I'm still mad at both of them for that day, but that was a one of my big dolphin that just oh yeah. Uh, but Man, I it, it, this it whole, does, this it whole conversation is actually depressing me. We well, got to step is, it up. It's crazy. All right. This goes back. Is it to, strange? Well, no. Which is cool. You go back in the day. We used to fish Senator Sixo, Penn Senator yep. Sixos back then, and, and in the charter boat business, my dad would tie line to line to line. So you never know. You know, we didn't put fresh line mm-hmm. on. It was what a charter boat guy had at the time, and that's what. We had, and we, I ended up catching a 335 blue marlin off of Miami on one of my yellow mullet swimming off the back of the boat, and it was it was pretty cool. So it was things happened. And yeah, we stuck them, gapped them, threw them in the boat, and he got smoked. Yeah, I did have I had I had an old senator one time on Memorial Can't Day years ago, and and it, twenty pound test and a big blue marlin pit it, and I'm just enjoying the ride, <laughs> just like staring at him, seeing him greyhound in a way that big old back just boom boom boom, psh, bye. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I didn't mean to bring Captain Harry in for the first time ever to have all these depressing, I lost them. Oh, but oh, they're, they're, they, are, they are good things. You asked a question. I was like, yeah, it is. And, and, and anybody who fishes, especially if they fish quite a bit, that there's not any, if anyone tells you that they never had a heartbreak or lost really a, a great fish, they're, they're probably lying to you. Oh, they're not fishing yeah. much. Either that or yeah. they don't know what to even do. But it uh, that's part of the, the deal, and you fish a lot, and – you get a lot of super good catches, and then sometimes you get the heartbreaks in there. But um, oh, that's all part of the game. It's how you learn what yeah. not to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do. You, right. you, you always think about oh, yeah. what could you have done differently, and you learn by that. Yeah. There's nothing so, that makes you remember 100%. more <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what yeah, right. not to do. Yeah. Right. But circling back to, to Miami now, he, we, you were talking about how things have changed in there. But if you really look at Miami, as far as the light tackle pioneer – fishing you know back when six pound test was a category a lot of the light tackle tricks and techniques originated out of miami because they had the metropolitan of miami fishing tournament which was known mm-hmm. the met that was huge and this Big was time. like a major deal if you lived in miami you know you were prepping ready for that met tournament and had all the species and different line categories and it was tournament huge line. yeah and and so you everybody was really keyed into this light tackle and trying to target fish in different species and through that miami um history there were so many pioneers that perfected the art uh like jay lee cuddy remember him and mm-hmm. and and, and oh, yeah. with, with the, the 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 fine lines that would test right at the breaking strength and not over test where your catch would be disqualified mm-hmm. to a lot of light tackle techniques were pioneered and one of them in particular People think that the Bristol knot, that you, 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 you connect a double line with your leader with a Bristol knot, was a fairly recent knot, like 10 or so years. But the Bristol knot, 
dated way back to to at least the mid seventies, the late seventies. And I was there with the individual who showed the knot. I was in North Miami, and mm-hmm. there is a little tackle shop up there called Useland Rods. Oh, yeah. They built custom rods. It was a small place and, and, and reels, but a lot of light tackle guys would hang there. And there's this one guy who was a Miami angler, and he moved to Tennessee. And he picked up the art of catching these big, I guess, impoundment striped bass that are up there, and then he get these real large ones. And he always loved spin tackle and light tackle. So he wanted to figure out how do you put a long leader on the line. So if he has to work a fish around and, and get the, the the leader onto the spool, then he could reach down and do whatever he did. So he perfected the knot, which is a tiny knot that would wind through the guides of spinning reels and through the line roller onto the reel. And if the fish would run, that knot would not jam in that reel uh, roller. And it was such a tiny knot that... That's when it was first heard of. And a lot of those guys in that shop develop it. I learned how to tie it. So they dubbed it the Bristol Knot for Bristol, Tennessee, mm-hmm. where this gentleman had settled. So that goes way, way back. So a lot of that pioneering stuff did come out of out of Miami. This has been history lessons with yeah, George right. Paul Romo. A lot of history. That's incredibly, incredibly cool. Yeah, it is, and you, and you think about that to and find out that the Bristol knot was named after Bristol, Tennessee, and just because not, of the not some. Yeah, that's right. great. That's it good stuff. Miami, and that yeah. it was that far back, and it, this it wasn't recent times that w- when this knot had come right. out. You had that going on, and that was a credit to the Met tournament back then with the different line classes, where people trying to well, you're allowed 15 feet of leader on there, mm-hmm. and if they could get 15 feet of leader or whatever the case may be and get that leader onto the spool that's a little extra pressure if you're fishing 6-pound or 12-pound, and you could get that fish quicker to the gaff. They had all these tricks. A lot of them had good tricks. And and some of them, unfortunately, were cheating tricks. And there were a number of them, we're not mentioning names, you and I know a bunch of them, but one of the biggest tricks back then (laughs) was when they would catch a a cheater and say somebody caught a 12-pound test, let's just say, a 50-pound dolphin, and they're looking, they said, well, you know, somebody's got a 52, and it was in a, you know, caught that, but, you know, if I scale down to eight pound, man, I got this thing, and so what they would do, you had to, had to give out a certain amount of line off your reel for testing, mm-hmm. if, and they would put the line on a dashboard of their car. Well, IGFA light tackle does that too, doesn't it? Yes, they do. For IG- yeah. It's for IGFA World Records. And some yeah. of the people that were involved in the cheating of the Met had IG- pending IGFA World Records. And this is where this was founded out. So they would leave it on a dash. So you got a hot heat day like we have in here. And that 20-pound would start testing at, at 15 or 12 pounds, depending on how long you left it. The 12-pound would sit there and eventually break at eight pounds. They would weaken a line and then submit it and cheat to get another category. And that was eventually caught on in a couple of, uh, uh, more than a couple of met. Oh, my God. Are were, you kidding uh, me? No, that was Is it tricks. really worth that well, much? Well, that's the, back in the day, that was huge. It, the other One of the things, which we won't mention names, but down way south, uh, shark fishing. <laughs> you know, you're allowed a 15-foot leader. Mm-hmm. Well, they're fishing in six feet of water. So they're literally, they lure the shark up to the, to the boat, and the shark will eat the bait, and the angler just sets the hook, and the captain grabs the leader. That's a catch and release, or they'll stick the gaff them right there on the spot, catch the three, four hundred pound shark. Trick catches just just that quick. They'll hold him there long enough just to stick them, bring him back, weigh him. But do, they but that's what they the did rules, back in they the were day. Legal. That's that, legal. Yeah. So a lot of this had had you know, come on. You hook a fish and. The boat operator at that point was maybe even more important than the angler because that boat operator upon the hookup had to race that boat down to that leader mm-hmm. and, and the gaff person and and, he, and these catches ended, uh, you know, but that's rather in quickly. Every sport. There's always somebody. There's always something. Yeah, bending the rules or breaking yeah, them. We had uh, Carl Anderson <laughs> and um, Jack Vitek mm-hmm. and you know the IGFA, and this is before the light tackle tournament that they just had up there in Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the questions we asked was, or somebody asked, what was what was the strangest, um, like one that never passed, like that they really had a tough time judging, and it was some guy in Alabama for catching a bass on some big Alabama lure, 
And it was just like, just because there were so many spoons on this one thing, like, did it even matter, like, which yeah, one yeah. it hit? Like, but he so, ate one. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they actually, after like three years of investigation, oh, no they way. had to disqualify it because Whoa. it was tied to a contest of of this bass was caught on the, you know what I mean? Right. And it, it, so if yeah. you get the world record, then you win this contest. That's right. Yeah, and then they had to disqualify the whole oh, lot at the at the end of the day. So that happens. Weird stuff. But Carl Anderson always, uh, it was really cool having him on and talking about the light tackle tournament and um, you know and just the skill set oh, and yeah. the lost art of fishing for light tackle. So I'm glad you guys brought that up. It's a very interesting thing because when you're talking about Miami, very tough not to talk about light tackle. It, oh, yeah. it was yes. that, that's what all that's all what you did. Is, yeah. Is, yeah. You, you did. You go out with yeah. all the light tackle and, you Never know. Never used anything over 20 pound. I mean, 20 pound was heavy. Yeah. For a yeah. while, that was heavy. Except in the charter stuff with 50 pound. So, I am going to say that that was strange. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? That they that they let that. Because I'm going to segue into my yeah. Papa's Pilar strange questions. Good. Right? And we got a strange right. individual. And we're going to re-up. We're re- we're gonna re-up on our, man, on our drinks while oh, we do I'm this. Sorry. I just, I don't know why. I guess I, I don't know. There's a hole. There's a <laughs> so hole in the we're gonna freshen up our drinks, and and then we are we're gonna ask some strange questions. And I got a good one coming up from a mutual friend of ours, right? Cool so deal. if anyone wants some new ice, yeah. right? And then um, I'm gonna yeah. one more ice. There we go. That's, That's good. good right there. Let me put a couple more in mine. And right. what, what the heck? Because the Papa's Pilar is always at the studio. You know, the funny thing is, we had a tournament here at the end of Tahoe Marine Dock this weekend. Tell me when. Uh huh. You're good. Okay. Oh, shit. Hands all wet. Shoot. That was an accident, Sorry. but I'll just roll with it. And that, that's definitely not an angle cooler. You know, I could tell my hands are burning. That is not. That's why it. we hide it. That's like, hide a, that's like a demonic cooler there. That's like my hands burn. Well, wow, maybe that's... you can talk to the fine people at Angle Coolers. I may have to make... have them sponsor the show and give us a I cooler. That's why a... the cooler's <laughs> on the floor and not on the I table. I put my Angle Cooler on my little surfboard boat. Did you? My, my layman 18. Yeah, I just put that on there. The, um,. Yeah, yeah, we had a, a tournament here at the at the end of the Taha Marine Dock this, just this past weekend. Um, a local girl mm-hmm. who's in college has been putting on a trash can slam for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it it's a trash can that raises money for autism. It's a one hundred percent tournament that benefits you know the organ the local organization here, and um, yeah, it was it was outstanding. So you know, those are good. I can't remember why those I brought are that up. The but fun tournament. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are in our strange questions segment. The first one comes from our mutual friend Debbie Hansen. Oh, you know Debbie, that, mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> I love Debbie. You love Debbie. You love Debbie's Debbie because you person. can't help but not love Debbie because she's amazing likes, and she's she, awesome. He, Justin right? loves Debbie. Too. Justin, he knows fish with her, Debbie many times. Right. So I'm actually supposed to go fishing with her very soon. You oh, yeah. Well, hopefully, she can teach me. A thing she's or a two. wealth of knowledge. Yes, yeah. she is. Um. So, all right, so I texted. Right, so this is not the traditional way we do this. Normally I have a sheet of paper. This is mm-hmm. all formatted, so I'm going to take this organically here. I said, hey, Debbie, George and Catherine Harry Vernon on the show today have a strange question for me to ask. She says, hey, Dennis, oh, my, you've got the <laughs> dynamic duo in the house. <laughs> Absolutely. Ask George if he has had the opportunity to get his gaff engraved yet, followed by... A detailed explanation of the inscription that you would choose. Mm -hmm. Then ask Harry if he has any floating gaps in stock at Captain Harry's. If not, perhaps he can at least recommend one that has a non-slip grip. I'd love to hear if, why. If this were a boxing match, the referee would break it up. Keep those blows up. You're hitting yeah, those low blows. Hit There's some low. heavy low blows with that. It's verbatim. All right, I'll, I'll start because okay. I, I know where she's going with this. Yeah. Did I get my gaff engraved yet? And to her credit, this was her idea. We were having a discussion on gaffs, and you know, which we'll get into here in a second with Harry. And she says, you need to have your gaff en- engraved, like just a funny saying on it. And she thinks... Or she said, I think what you need to have engraved on your gaff is big letters, block letters, don't screw it up. So whoever <laughs> yeah. picks up the gaff could read, don't screw it up. And I in like turn, it. where I think she was going, well, not where I think, I know where she was going with this, was with him. No. And, <laughs> and with Harry. <laughs> Go ahead. And this is where she beats up on Harry. And, um, and I and, and again, Harry's, you know, my buddy. We grew up together the whole bit. He, he is a hell of an angler. If there's anybody... 
you know, that I want to fish with, he'd be right there. He's without a doubt. He, he does everything. I clean the boat well. <laughs> he, he does that, but it takes him a couple <laughs> Papa's Pilar to really get him to go. Yeah. But Harry does have this little thing about, and I don't know whether it's the age factor catching up, the eyes oh boy, are not seeing exactly what they're supposed it, to be the seeing. Gloves are, yeah, it, and it could be, yeah. yeah, it could be just a judgment thing that's a little bit off. But um, he's missed quite a few fish with the gaff, and the most notable one oh boy. was uh, we were doing the show at a Blue Marlin Cove in the Bahamas together, mm-hmm. and we had run way out to find you know, the yellow fins, and we got in and we had this beauty of a yellow fin that we were actually getting past the sharks. And I go, go, oh, Harry, go, and, and he planted this gaff, and this is all on film. This put us on the show, and it's been appearing <laughs> at our own. You better have oh, that footage so... of him uh, shopping at your store. <laughs> oh, and, and, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and it makes the appearance every now and then at our seminars. That's a little video clip. Comes. So he sticks this gaff, and when I saw him stick this fish, it was such a solid one. I said, man, man, Harry drilled us. Then I see him, then I see him bend over, oh, oh, grunting, and then over to Gunnels, and I thought he was going to go over, and then boom, Gone. the tuna takes off of the gaff. He mentioned something that we can't even say here on the show. I said. It's and I go, Harry, you know, and, and there goes this tuna. But I still had the tuna. And I said, get the second gas. He's still hooked up. Get the second up. gas. Yeah, the fish didn't get away, thank God. And so he oh, goes, he goes running up there mumbling all these I words. Said a lot of bad he, words. A lot of bad words so there. they couldn't film it. Oh, about yeah, so that's what he did. He did it on purpose. He just filmed. said this so. It's not thinking Discovery that, Channel worthy. That's what he oh, thought. No. Yeah. Right. But we had a good editing team. Yeah. So he run, they get the second <laughs> gaff, and he comes back down. We finally get the fish up, and he, he sticks it, and we get it. But what was funny about the first one, George, let the rod to higher. Like, well, it was my fault. You're the one who couldn't hang on to the gaff. <laughs> So that was what she was uh-huh. talking about there. So I will give him equal time for the rebuttal, which I could tell you right now. Put your boots on. No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, we had a, we were very low on bait. We so were. Yes. Our, our chumming the tunas up and getting in the right position to get these tunas. And we saw I saw a free jumper, and I was like, we got to move over a little bit. We move over. My hands are wet. I don't have any gloves on. Okay. You got to get a violin. <laughs> I got play here. No, no. Talking. See, you, just, just let me talk. Go ahead. So. <laughs> The gaff that he has also, when my hands are wet, and at my age, they get soft pretty easy. <laughs> They're not like they used to be. But so everything was great. We get the fish to the boat. I do stick the fish. It wasn't the greatest gaff job where I, when I stuck it because there's times. Was, it was there, a solid there's certain set. times to gaff it a was? fish. Yeah. But he was solid. heading already down. It was just, it was a bad deal. But still, I, I was able to hold on to anything. And this is what gets me mad. They don't film this. They don't see this part. <laughs> this gaff has got like three feet of just solid sandpaper on it. So you can have a good grip. Now, if you have gloves on, that's great. That fish would have never have gone any further than two inches if I had. But this thing would just just took uh, off all the skin I had on 27 my hands. So you're barehanded. Of, no, so I had 27 pairs gaffy. of gloves no, in the back console gloves. there to the point where you got to figure out there's so many of them, what, where's your left hand, no. where's your right That's hand? That's a problem. Well, it's not brought, like there was a lack of gloves. brought the fish in so no, fast he, that he didn't he, have time to get the gloves. He doesn't want me to use them, so he, he don't want him to get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, so I have to do anything barehanded. So it literally rips through my hands, and that part of it was F this, F that, and going on. My hands are bleeding because it shredded them crap out of my hands and that they don't show that on the on the tv <laughs> they just show the thing and the custing and the, and the fish goes away so that and the, and the other bad thing with that particular gaff that's a custom made your gaff, buddy built it albert castro know, but it, our mutual it, buddy right. okay he's got smaller hands than i do <laughs> but the, the grip on that gaff is very very narrow and skinny which is great lightweight it's it's a trust me i love the gaff it's a good gaff it's just not for my hands and that fish was able to slide right through my hands and, and, and get away. If it had a big fat grip on it, I, I, again, it, it wouldn't have <coughs> never gone anywhere. All right, well, so that's well, my. Well, seems pretty viable though. Well, wait, what um, happened well, to the tuna? Did you get the tuna? Oh, he oh, got, got the got second it. one. He got it, and we got it in, and we were so. I think relieved. I punched him out when he got yeah. in the boat. <laughs> so you redeemed yourself. Oh, we yeah. actually okay. had. An enjoyable 47-mile ride back to Blue Marlin Cove because we, we talked deck? to each other. Oh, oh fish, we brought, oh, we, we boated it. it. We so, lost I lost the gaff, gaff but oh. we, we got it. Well, the guy owns a tackle shop. Right. Well, I got a yeah. good deal on another one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. Albert, now, Albert that, now let me good, set the stage here with Harry. He's the typical prankster. And hit, this is where we, we just, I don't know, we, the craziness, we just get along so well. 
that on that same show, and when you're doing a TV show, you have a lot of money invested with production teams and travel expenses. Tell me about it. And, <laughs> well, there you go. I, there, I, there you go. Justin, you're in a hot seat. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to really get on the board. The last thing you want to do is leave a location and not have a shoot because everybody gets paid and you got to reschedule, but yeah. you didn't come away with it. So we start off, you know, as a, a, a tuna show, and we take off early, and we figure, let's go on the troll. We'll get some dolphin. We'll start building the show, and we'll end in the afternoon chasing the elephant. So we're halfway down to where we wanted to be, and we see birds. So we pull up on them, and there's, there's these five dolphin, nice-sized ones around, and there's one beauty. Harry, look at it. Look at this. And we had the camera both there. Camera guys are ready. So we start breaking out the spinners. And, oh. I, I, you know, I pitched the big one. I've got the big one hooked. So, all right, here's the show right here. And then Harry throws to the second biggest one. He gets that hooked. Then Harry being, you know, what Harry, he wants to boat everything. So he puts that rod in the holder. He gets a second one. He, he hooks the other fish. Puts that rod over. Hooks the other. Puts that. So all. now the Mark Six turns into a drift boat. we got these dolphins jumping everywhere. So I told Harry, okay, this the camera boat's trying you to get the in. only anglers on the boat. Yeah, yeah. and a camera boat now. Six dolphins on. What people don't and all nice ones. Nice dolphins. Oh, so you're treating them like schoolies. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, yeah, and what 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 the people don't understand when they see the show is if we're fun fishing, we would do that because you get the numbers. But you right. got to understand, you need to leave a path for the camera boat to get right in in work. You can't have lines everywhere where the camera boat can come in, yeah, get the can. props all wrapped up in line, and it, it's. This is a different animal. So we're getting it. I said, Harry, make sure you gaff this big bull that I have on first. This is a showstopper. Okay. So he gets the gaff out. And Did you put the gloves on? I don't probably know if he had the gloves on. Probably not. I don't <laughs> probably think Probably not. So all you of a sudden, get dirty. I said, all right, Harry. And then he goes back to fighting the fish. I got my bull here. He goes, all right. And he's grabbing his, he reels this other fish in. And, and, and boom, he gaffs that and puts it in. Harry, get this big one. Uh, all right. And he grabs the other rod, and he's playing around this other. So he's now having his farm figured, I'm going to get all these other ones and leave George sweating out there. <laughs> and and my that big bull is the last one that he actually gaffed. So this is how the games sort of go when, when when you're with him. Yeah. But we got them all. But we got them all. Oh, you got them all. We good. got them all. I had yeah, a, few, a few choice words with him once that we yeah. got them all. And then at the end, you but. saw a yellow fin tuna come through <laughs> with a gaff stuck in it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> with a big, long candle. But the, you had a shark come up on your fish, too. Yes, we did. And that was crazy. Because like, ah, that was after really some of the shark was coming like up, and I was mad. Harry should have gaffed his fish first, but somehow the shark left it alone. Yeah. I'm going to so, bring up sharks in a little bit. Oh, boy. I'm going to bring them up in a little bit. But that first, I want to ask the next question. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, setting those two off. Well, she like really that. started up. Absolutely. But George did lose her first big dolphin ever she <laughs> I ever did. had on I, the gas. I did. The Debbie Hanson, I did. And he, oh. See there? And oh. You, and you talk about So a, maybe that's the genesis of the entire where, question right there. Yeah. yeah Sigmund Freud had, would thank say. Thank you for bringing that up. There you go. Yeah, Sigmund she Freud. Had a nice dolphin. Proceed, gentlemen. Mm. Sigmund Freud would say that this is <laughs> Debbie unleashing I see her now. disappointment in me. I see now. Back on us. Projection, mm. I think they call that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Is I I knew Debbie and she had done one of her seminars. I was testing her, said she's really good, but so let me see if she's TV show worthy. She did her seminar series well, and I said this would be a great show. Let me take her out of her element. And I said, Debbie, you want to do a show? We're going to go to Treasure Cay in the Bahamas. So she jumped on it. So we're fishing, and I said, what what a good angle. You get this inshore personality, mostly freshwater, and now you're going into the Bahamas, and you're going big game fishing. So, you know, she wanted to get a, a, a dolphin, and we're uh, we're trolling. Everything's going good, and all of a sudden, here a nice bull, 30, 35 pounder hits. All right, Debbie, here you go. Fight the fish. This is great. Camber boats get in position, and she's fighting. And I've got the gaff out, and here comes the fish, alongside the boat, and it was my mistake in that I was so anxious to get that fish for her. That I, I went in there too rapidly with a gaff. If I just took my breath and said, just pause for a second, collect your thoughts, get the rhythm, I would have nailed it because it was an easy gaff. So here it comes. But I rushed right over. I saw that fish, saw my opportunity because she had it on the 50. So was, the fish had a lot of green still in it. Mm-hmm. I reached over and I nailed that fish. Bob, 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 bob. It's going crazy. And all of a sudden, comes off the hook. Okay. The lure's gone. The bull dolphin swims away. And Did I you could, have, have like three strikes at it first before that? May have. 
What, what's I think you're playing for the Marlins. I think you, you know. Missed, you, you know, you're right. I think I think uh, to Harry's I think credit. I, I, I think a I, couple of Dragon Waters. Goes back to I think the I did. Dog you know, dragon Water yeah. a couple times. See, I have a short yeah. memory on that already. Yeah, yeah. Of course he does. And uh, so yeah, I what's, think what's I your slot on the weight there? Uh, on the what? On the weight of that dolphin. It had been thirty easy, probably thirty five, pushing it. It was just a beautiful bull dolphin. That would have been so great for her. And Maybe I did. So it was I, like 60 pounds. No, 60 pounds, <laughs> I would have committed suicide. <laughs> no, she would have killed you. Yeah, she would have. Oh, and so boy. I took a few shots, and, and, and instead of just calming down, and, and that, that messed it up, and I lost it. But it was so disappointing. And But then I did make it up. I caught her a white marlin. She got herself yes. a white marlin. Oh, good for you. And I there said, all right, so we that save That does face. make up for it. Yeah, yeah. but this yeah. is sort of where, maybe where the gaff thing all comes really, if you really get down with it. It happens when you fish enough, things yeah. are going to happen. Things I don't care who happen. you are, things how are great happen. you think you are, things are going to happen, especially when you get old like us. <laughs> All kinds hey, of things sometimes, happen. <laughs> sometimes you walk in your house and you bump into a wall and uh, you spill your drink. I mean, yeah. th- things, <laughs> things happen, right? And you yell at the wall for being there. <laughs> right. And you yell at the wall. Yeah. You blame right. the builder. Yep, yep. Or you yell uh, at your wow. wife for having the wall there. <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say that Debbie's going to win the question today, but... Um, you know, I think this is a pretty darn good one. So, but the next one comes from Mike Lambrix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, Mike, um, for those of you that don't know, or those of you that do watch the show, understand that Mike is the president of the Broward CCA chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, he asks um, George specifically if he can get your dolphin tactics instructional video in VHS still. Oh my gosh! Holy uh, good God! And this was, it was funny too. I, I know you can't, and that had gone from the progression when it was VHS to what CDs the or DVDs, DVDs. for we video DVDs. DVD. We did, and we ran them because um, I had it been 1994 when we did that mm-hmm. how-to, and it was incredible how many we moved on that, and then they were still selling. Baby, and then we did we converted them to the. Uh, and we sold them the bunch DVDs, of those. the DVDs, yeah. Yeah. and then finally, you know, they ran the course, and and they were just so outdated. The information was good, but you like you look back to 1994, like I jokingly say, I'm looking at myself. I still had a Beatles haircut back then. It was like, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> at but, least but, you have hair. Mine's all gone. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, no, I I think I've got a couple that I had saved. So if he's really that desperate for viewing material, tell him to call me. I'll just send him one. I'm going to tell you, though, Mike's a fairly young guy. Yeah, he is. Right? So it's, it's interesting that he brings that up because that just shows he grew up watching you. He told me yeah. that when I first met he? him. He right. said, when Mike's you came out with that Mike's Dolphin DVD, guy. Guy. he <laughs> said, I ordered one. Did back he? when we first came out. And he said he had ordered them. And, and, and that's what he said. That was, I had your Dolphin video. Yeah. And, um, I mean, what's he now, 18? <laughs> I think he's 30. Okay. To be honest, to be honest with you. That's but, pretty uh, cool, though, that he... Yeah, well, it was. He's absolutely. got some... We hey. sold a ton of those. I know. We sold a bunch uh, uh, yes, of those. Yeah, was, I want to give a shout-out to Mike Lambrix, actually. Um, I always say he, he's one of the bright, shining stars of the, of the youth of South Florida yep. right now. And I say youth because, you know, whatever. But, you know, he's, he's a full-grown adult, but... <laughs> Um, president of the Broward CCA chapter, mm-hmm. very successful entrepreneur, um, embarking on a very clean waterways initiative yes. um, with 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 that group, a revolutionary project that yes. they're working on. I, I can't see that. That's a triple capital R when I say revolutionary. Uh, what they got working on, and he just got named um, by the uh, to by Governor DeSantis to the Broward Housing Authority. Um, council, so and he's moving on up. So Mike, and, and I got I got to throw a kudos out to him when he had become the president of the Broward CCA. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he he is doing a tremendous job. He's on he top really of is. it, and the oyster project that he worked on, right. getting great data from that. And, and I've been arguing, you know, I I'm with the you know, CCA. I'm their offshore fishing spokesperson, and I not argue, but I get I I talk to him all the time, that, and I said, look, you got to understand. You know, because you could go to Bradenton, which is their their largest. They do a thousand people at their annual banquet. Mm-hmm. You wow! Come, no, they do. That's at the, a banquet. They cracked a thousand. Wow! That's awesome. And you come. To I'm Broward, the artist for a bunch of their different banquets all in the area. Bradenton and it's is not their that top. big. Yeah, that that's great. And you come to South Florida, which has you know Fort Lauderdale or Broward, way bigger population, and we're struggling with 200 whatever members yeah. we have, mm-hmm. and. 
I keep stressing. I said, you've got to understand how this, the, the, how Florida is split up. Over there, you have mostly inshore on the southwest Florida coast. And that's where, you know, like people 90% think, mostly inshore. So yeah. CCA, yeah. you see redfish, you see snook, you right. see all this. Tarpin. You come to our side, you know, you still see the redfish. They'll put a dolphin decal out. But most of the anglers here, I'm of the belief that if they're not a member of CCA, they view them as an inshore group. So, well, that's great they do that for stook and redfish. I, I, I fish the reef. I go offshore. I go to the Bahamas. There's nothing in that for me. And most, I wouldn't say most, but I would say at least 40 to 50% of their battles relates to the reef and offshore anglers, too. Mm-hmm. But they have a very – they're not good at putting that word out. I stress, I said, you need to come with your marketing to – the, uh, from Stewart to Palm Beach to Broward and Dade and show them and boast what you're doing for the reef, the offshore anglers, to get that membership. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's a really, really good point because that is true. When, when most you see the CCA logos and it's that little redfish curling yep. under sure. Florida. and everything. So everyone primarily does think of it as an inshore thing. But I will say they do do a lot of work on the reef. They absolutely and, do, but, but they don't But you wouldn't know, it, right? But, I mean, you would know it if you really paying attention, but it's not like you would if, like, if you talk about their star program, for for example, like the redfish kind of thing that they do. Um, but, yeah, that's a really, I'm glad you brought that up. They were I, I do want to focus, because we had Dr. Charlie Gregory on the, the previous mm-hmm. episode before this, we're talking about, and he's the reef doctor. He, he runs the Reef Institute up there in Palm Beach. They do a lot of peanut island research and stuff like that. Um, but And he's involved with, with, with Mike on other projects. And they're doing great things on the reef right now, although the reefs need a lot of help. A lot, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of help. And I cannot stress that enough. I mean, we're down to like 2% capacity in South Florida mm-hmm. on our reef we're restoration at, right we're now. It's we're, not we're, good we're, on, we're on the committee. Yeah, it's not good at all. You no, know what I mean? And we're trying horrendous. to get that word out on this show. But it's about water quality is what the, the biggest thousand percent, problem is. Thousand percent. From the start. It's, and, it's and we're not allowed. I got, I got to sort of t- stop Harry. Here. So, so we are <laughs> on that committee. God. I think we're not really allowed. It's the sunshine law to talk about it outside okay. of the committee. Uh, oh, then, then we'll no, stop but, talking. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, no, but I'm going to go ahead. What the point being is like I didn't said, know that, by the way. So yeah. Yeah, I just <laughs> organically just no, brought that up. It yeah. is like you said, the reef at 2% life left in it. It's actually what we understood in the last couple was 1%. 1% of our reefs out of South Florida remain alive. Mm-hmm. 99, 98% are dead. So anyway, again, it, it, everyone thinks, well, that's the offshore, this and that. What are we going to do? And protect the reefs what can we do to rebuild it if you could even attempt to rebuild well charlie says we can okay as long as you got some life breathing in that reef you can because de- they're taught there he went through some science on the last episode that proves that we can okay which is good but here's where the people a lot of them are missing the boat where they don't think it starts it starts with fresh water mm-hmm that 100%. fresh water with all the herbis the, all the spray and everything that's going on that well, comes to Biscayne Bay. Yeah, the outflow. Our grasses in North Bay are wiped out because of all the continuing releases from the fresh water and the homes that are spraying weed killers. And then the outgoing tide, all that bad water that's been there for decades goes out and actually works on the reefs and kills them. Then you have the addition of that, the warming water temperatures that, that the corals are having a problem with, acidity levels. But it goes back... The, the, I think any chance to save the reefs, unless they come up with a super coral that's impervious to acid in the warm and water temps, the they need to st- clean these inshore waters up and and stop the spraying in these freshwater canals, all the all these chemicals that are they're not only killing the weeds, well, but everything stuff else. Well, coming off of 95, yeah. all the cars, the oils, the greases. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, the runoff. You know where my store is? I have yeah. a canal, this, the, the, the New River Canal right there. I've watched them spray the chemicals. I've watched the grass when we first moved there. Uh, Ten years ago, the grass was there, beautiful fish in there. We feed snook and bluegills and everything bass, and they came in and sprayed it. Grass is gone, completely gone. So all that washed out, killed mm-hmm. the bay, killed everything. Uh, they've stopped it. The grass is growing back, really, really good right now. <laughs> well, that they came back they, in. They, they, they not that long ago, they sprayed stuff. again. Did so, they? Oh, they yes. could do it really? continuously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and all this grass is coming up again. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Routinely, they've got to stop the spraying. Right. That's exactly it's, it's it. All in the name of what? 
beauty, laziness. Because, you know yeah, what I mean? Because they don't laziness. want to trim. They there don't want to go. go back to old school and and use machines to cut in this. Now they just guy goes down with a boat and just and I've got video <laughs> I can show you of the guy just spraying just. You can give all that to him. Of, all yeah. in the water. It's it's horrendous what they're doing, and uh, it, it's it's bad. And, and I'll give you a quick stupid scenario, but of water quality, I, I have a fish tank at my house. It's a ninety gallon saltwater tank. I had coral growing in. I had uh, uh, sea anemones, clownfish, everything in that thing. Live uh, shrimp. It was incredible. I have a University of Miami scientist down the street. He was coming to my tank, taking some of my stuff out for his tank because it was growing so well, and it was great. And nobody, and this would kind of gets me mad when they want to close areas of the reef, close it. It's the fishermen. Well, not everyone out there catching the clownfish. No one's out there catching the sea anemones, and that's dying for a reason. So I had this beautiful tank, unreal, and I did not. I did two stupid things. I put something in the tank that shouldn't have been in there. And it threw the water off, and it killed everything in the tank. Everything. Everything. And I was so – I mean, it cost me a lot of money. <laughs> and and the, the, the marine scientist down the street goes, why would you put that in your tank? That's, and that's, it's the water quality. It's mm-hmm. what I put in the water that killed everything. It wasn't because people were fishing in my tank. <laughs> no one's allowed to fish in my tank anyways. But it's, it's just something – that's what's happening with that's, the bay. And you're it's, exactly right. It's you killer. guys are both right. Because right? it, I, you know what? I just thought of they this, right? To so to draw a parallel, because I always like to draw parallels. Because mm-hmm. to me, when you draw parallels, that really clarifies things, right? So two things. Number one, COVID nineteen. If you look outside and you look at oh yes, the earth, right. everything looks going. beautiful. Yes, right. Water's everything. Clear. Everything looks wonderful, yep. right? But we've got a pandemic going on. Right, that, yeah. that there's this 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 issue that this viral issue that we have, and that's no different than dirty water, right? For the reefs, yeah. right? And also, too, people always talk about, oh, we need to find another planet that's got life like Earth. Yeah. <laughs> we need to find another We'd planet in some far off galaxy. We need to find that. We need to find that. And I'm thinking, why? Because we screwed this one up. Yep. <laughs> Not even that. When we get there, what the hell do you think's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Do the same damn thing. We are not going to be immune to anything on that planet, yeah. right? Because we haven't built that up yes. over generations and generations. Our DNA is going to die on that planet. Yep. We aren't going to stand a chance because no. we haven't built up any immunities. Yeah. Right? Yep. So that's just like the reefs are dealing with the same damn thing. When we get these herbicides coming in and just coming and contaminating those reefs, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're not going to stand a chance. No. No wonder it's 2%. Yeah. It's, You're it's, right, George. But see, those, why, it, it, those, two, those herbicides are absolutely the problem. And, and, and the outflow is the issue. Right. It, oh, th- th- well, that's where it's it not starts. Just, that, just the, all you got to realize, all these cars that are driving down 95, the turnpike, all that, everything goes into the canals. All that water, all that runoff from your car engine, the transmission fluid, fluid all that stuff goes in these canals when when we have a really nasty rain i'll walk out to the canal and you just, just you an see oil the sheen slick. on the top it's an oil slick just going out it's just you're like you looking a, at it i and you know and, and, i'd look at it and go it's just god darn man you know what's what, a how do we problem stop about that th- how do you filter that how do you stop that from that happening if well, they could put somebody we could get to mars they could uh, figure out a fairly easy way they to can scan figure that it out right out. Yeah, sure Laziness yeah. and, and greed. Uh, right. Greed. Yeah. Right? Oh, so if you, everyone wants to blame Big Sugar, which they're to blame. Mm-hmm. Which has so been l- l- let me Let me not yeah. say that they're not, okay? Right. They are. But there's other factors, too. A lot more. Impervious yeah. surfaces, oh God, yeah. sprawl. Like, we weren't sure. built. This state was not built to have this many people in it. No. I'm sorry. It wasn't. Nope. Like, if it's you look at better. Manhattan is built on granite, okay? Yeah. We're not granite. No. There's a reason that Florida is the last frontier of the united states because you couldn't build on it it's swamp it's sand you know what i mean it's a natural flowing river of a place Mm -hmm. now it sounds hypocritical for me to say that because i've lived here all my life you know my my forefathers came from new jersey (laughs) you know whatever (laughs) so from jersey it was so it's like but they moved down here yeah okay so eventually someone's got to come here from somewhere else Mm -hmm. right but you know i i watched uh I just got done watching all this black sails. I've been into the pirate thing lately uh-huh. because I, w- I want to really get a better understanding of, I know I'm going off on a tangent here, Sorry, piracy and Nassau Bahamas, which was really the, the Mecca and, and 
the, the breadbasket of all of piracy, mm-hmm. and why they would always just run back to North Carolina for all their problems, and South Carolina, Charleston for all their problems. They would never really come here. It's because we were inhabitable, right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't really right. mosquitoes, natives, oh, yeah. gators. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. You couldn't really build here, be, you know, and it wasn't until Flagler came down with the damn railroad be, and started putting down solid surfaces so we could build something here. Yeah. Right. So I mean, we weren't really intended for this, and now after COVID, and now after, let's just call it questionable politics. Mm-hmm. Right. We're not going to get too deep into it. Right. We have an influx of people by the thousand a day come from New York, New England, California, right? They all want to come here. And we don't have room for that. No. You know, and so that oil slick is going to get bigger, bigger. Mm-hmm. right? And that cars. outflow is going to get more. Sewage Because breaks. everyone's going to want their... Yeah, the sewage breaks. There was one today Absolutely. down in Biscayne Bay. Traffic That's what Biscayne Bay, North traffic, Biscayne Bay is noted horrendous. for their sewer breaks at least one or a, a year, if not twice. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale has been crazy. No, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. That that's I don't even say what that is, yeah. but it you know it's, it's north end of the Dead Sea. I'm not going to get into the solutions. We've gotten into the yeah. sol- if we start getting into the, the solutions, we're going to be here forever. Well, yeah. spin, I'm going to spin. But there this, are solutions. I will spin this oh, out yeah. of here on this one. It just for yeah. thought. Sorry. It, no, that's no, this is all good. This is perfect. I just think the audience needs to know. Yeah, for one sure. One spin off that was brought up uh, by an individual. I won't bring his name up because. Uh, he serves on the committee, a highly experienced fisherman. And he says he had brought up that maybe we are looking at this the wrong way. We're trying to figure out how to save 2% in your case or 1% of our reefs. It's insane. How are we going to do that? He said we need to really look at this in an entirely different way and come out with concrete-type Artificial reefs, not some just thinking freighters, but having develop certain types of concrete structures that so can be do. set at the certain uh, depth of contours where a lot of our key bottom fish spawn at to give them the relief. And you set these and you build these occasionally or, or, or based on the type of species, and the concrete is not going to erode. It'll grow some mild algae, whatever, and create the zones, but you're going to put the structure in that'll be impervious to like the warming waters, the acidity levels, the pollution that's still coming out. He says, he's arguing that we're looking at this whole thing the wrong way. How do you save 1% or 2% unless there's a super coral being developed that could repopulate that? I wouldn't want to call it a super coral, but Charlie Gregory had some good science that the Reef Institute's I'm, I'm, working I'm, on right now. Right. So I, I would actually encourage everyone who's watching this episode to go back and watch episode 82 as well to, to, to just touch on some of that stuff that we're talking uh-huh. about right now. Um, but artificial reefs is the answer. It has to be. And, and, and yeah. any, anyone that wants to argue against art, artificial reefs is... You, at least you know, in the near just, term. Please just educate yourself. You have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. please just yeah. please just really look at it for what yeah. it is. No doubt. If you want answers, you can handle the truth, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I've, there not that I've ever done this myself, <laughs> but I know where, I know where stuff that was put in the water mm-hmm. that has got some spectacular fishing around yep. it. And there's corals growing on it, all kinds of stuff growing on stuff that was put out in the bay. Well, I can say right and now that... It's, it would blow your mind. And then, for some reason, they came in, not particularly the spot that I know very well, few spots, but they came in... Uh, I'll give you a, a, an easy example. Off Cape of Cane, it was a little artificial reef that was put out. Some Step bicycles... Bruce's work? Some who? Bruce, Bruce Marks has worked at all? No, this no, 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 no one in that credibility. No. No, okay. <laughs> this was off, off the beach, off Key Biscayne, uh, Key Biscayne Beach Club, and it was out probably 40, 50 yards max. And all the kids would swim out to it, swim around it. There was so many fish around this thing and growth on it. It was unbelievable. And it was, it was a cool thing for my kids swimming out. They used to swim out and, and look at lobsters and, and sea urchins and all kinds of stuff around this thing. Well, FWC or whoever all of a sudden comes in one day and took everything out of the bottom, took it all out. I didn't even know how they knew it was there. To what end and for a reason? They took it out because it was whatever. I, I don't know. That's it, when they were doing still. It wasn't still. supposed to be there. Pulling. It wasn't. That, that was set. Natural. They didn't do by it. By an aspiring angler. Right. They didn't do it or whatever. And it's they, sort of like you can't come out it's, here it's legally stupid. set fads. It's crazy that yeah. they would do something like that without any type of research of or even diving it themselves. Oh, it's not natural. 
it doesn't have to be natural. It's, it's got to be stuff that we could to. I mean, there's bait around it. There's everything right. around this thing. It was incredible. Do you, do you and know, it wasn't big. It was probably, pull- probably. You can't say what it is. What well, it I, I just oh, want to know like when they pull up. carts, uh, bicycles, uh, some some big barrels, okay. trash can Structure. barrels. Structure. And it was just stuff that, that gradually was put out there. and so much. But growth got on this stuff. And it was. But when they Every, pulled it out of the water, they take the Captain Harry decals off those barrels. Oh no! Don't don't don't, don't throw Captain. <laughs> they Harry. removed the live cam. <laughs> no, this no, this wasn't. This had, actually, this this had nothing to do with me. I've got my own other. I mean, my friends have got my other own stuff out in their areas that they have. But I mean, this is what you have to do today to to have your spots in fishing areas. You got to have your, your good areas. But it, it, there's fish come to where growth growth is reef it's, uh, structure they they go there group gag groupers they yeah. they need mm-hmm. to hide somewhere right they they've got to go to places and and it's just it's it's an automatic deal but and they're opening up a a grouper season again so. well here's i'm gonna throw this out so i sorry i didn't want to yeah. forget to bring that up i, I think we good. need to segue out of this depressing Topic to something that really. I'm not depressed. Today. No, that, that, I'm having, no, I'm having gonna, a nice conversation. Pretty he keeps good. saying he's yeah. depressed. That's something to really enlighten us. Let's talk about sharks. Oh, yeah, we could. We, we oh, definitely could. But, but, but you, you segued in the Goliath Grouper situation. They're looking seriously at opening that. I think they need to put the brakes on that because they need to open sharks before they open Goliath Groupers. The sharks are out, yeah, of control. out of control. Keep the Goliaths parked. Oh, yeah, they do their things, but they're nowhere near. What is going on today? We are out of control of these sharks. They need to have a limited commercial reentry. They need to get it going now. It's it's out of control. Please uh, please well, continue. I, I, I we protected this. This is exactly what Harry? we need to talk about. No, no the shark. I, you guys are being mean to the shark. <laughs> oh, here we go. You got you got to understand the position that I'm in. I saw a lot of fish hooks, and all these fish that are getting eaten by all these sharks right now are just awesome. I'm selling more hooks than I've ever sold ever. Because sharks are eating everything they, they, they people they catch, so it's great for me. But in reality, are there a lot of sharks? Way more. Yes. I've never seen this many sharks. Me either. Uh, and I, I give you another example: Kibis Cane. We've my entire life growing up around the Kibis Cane Yacht Club, diving, swimming, jumping, jumping our bites in the water. I mean, I've never seen a bull shark. I've seen more bull sharks around there now than I've ever seen. We caught one over five hundred pounds at the yacht club. At the, yeah, I remember that. And five hundred. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was in, huge. in the marina. It was. I got photos of them. Yes, yeah, they they, well, they the, come inside. The divers won't clean the bottom of the boats now because the tiger. Yeah, they, the bull they, sharks are there. they come inside. Oh, they're they're well. We got the tarp in there. We got. There's a spot right the here. Most we've ever seen at uh, at Hillsborough Bridge, not Hillsborough Inlet, but Hillsborough Boulevard. Right. Right. Well, people and are j- feeding j- them. just north of that. Yeah. Right. It, it's feeding a them. seasonal this, thing. This feeding thing. Uh, feeding it's them is. Of, yeah. So all right. So there we've, we. Uh, I've discussed this at length. Right. So there's multiple factors to this, right? There's people feeding them, the, the glorification to the shark excursions and different right. things like Which that, right? Which is so cool. Yeah. But. Fantastic. Let me tell you. <laughs> but they've also limited long lining for sharks, right? Yeah. And they um, have opened up um, other sharks for, that you're not allowed to, you know. Right. Maybe, catch or kill them. Catch or kill. Yeah. But, you know, the bottom line is it's a problem. Big time, over and it, and, and nobody's listening. No. And it, you know, I even we're going to create a panel here on the show. We're gonna, we're going to do a large. We're going to do something here, and I'm kind of teasing this. We're something, and I'd love you guys to be a part of it. Um, to where we're going to have a group of people to openly talk about this because we're facing a lot of issues of uh, government issues and regula- regulatory mm-hmm. issues on this. Um, and there, it stems and spawns down to so many factors of why it's important to take care of this. Um, and it's not just a pleasure thing, right? It, it is an ecological thing, mm-hmm. and it is a balance thing. Mm-hmm. It's a marine balance issue that we are facing right now. Um, we're not going to stop fishing. You know, and you know, the sharks are very smart, and they learn. Mm-hmm. And they understand what's going on, and they understand where the food uh, is, where the food is, and how to get it. Mm-hmm. They're not an A-list predator for nothing. Um, and you know, there's something's got to be done. And, and people need to understand; they need to right. listen to what we're talking about because 
so many of us are talking about the same thing in the same way, and for them to ignore what we have to say is not only just dismissive, but it's uh, disrespectful. Right. Well, well, they do it for alligators. You have an alligator hunt Mm -hmm. because there's too many alligators. So... They have a, a season. I, I just where think that you can catch the shark has become taboo. Quota. Like, oh, you, it's, it's you know, crazy. Everyone's afraid to even broach that. Because the movie Jaws, they're all like. That's, but, well, that's so they, let's get back to culture, right? So you, you, you build a culture around ecological um, education, and oh, let's save the whales. Let's save this. Let's save that. Let's save everything. Why not? What could be wrong about saving everything? Stop driving. But the right? problem, the saving the sharks, they're an apex predator. They, the Correct. only they're a different, predator they different have animal would be us. Literally. So all of a sudden, you're protecting the apex predator, and, mm-hmm. and they're just devastating everything else. Like, mm-hmm. you know, how could you go and, and drop down and fish for your snappers and muttons, and you got to get a certain length limit? How many of those get eaten away up? Or if it's undersized, how many of those fish get eaten when you're releasing them? You release them. It, 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 just think of the amount of reef fish that they're devastating, and, and they're they're on the sails now. It, it's very difficult to run into the Bahamas unless you just they're get lucky to well, get tunas. the tunas. Yeah. You know, they're I remember smart. fishing that channel. You get those tunas. You never, never even thought about a shark. Never even saw it. I wish Nicole were here right now to to be at the bar. She had to leave early today, but she she just went over to Bimini for her birthday. She got one yellowfin. I'm like, oh, cool! You got the one. She's like, yeah, we're so lucky. Like the, the other seven got sharked. Okay, and, and there's seven. a problem. Why would you sit there and if the sharks are that bad, sacrifice those yellow fins? Well, you know, it's sort of like something just not you right don't about. No, they're going to get. You sacrificed. Well, I know, but if after a while, and here's uh, they got number six, it, it, it's uh, it's out of control, gotcha. and they need to have a limited commercial reentry. And I can understand. You know, you still protect. You know, the the big predator sharks. That they're protecting, you know. I think we we have a lot of issues here with the bull sharks that are in there, and um, but they need to have a limited commercial entry, and maybe more than limited. And when I say limited, I'm talking about give it two years, then we'll stop, and let's have an evaluation and see how things are going. And, and if they're still overbearing, then open up, continue it some more. I but, agree. I agree. I mean, I think we need way to go. At least something. <laughs> you, you, it's, it's like give us now. a little something. Sure. You, you got certain. Like people come in the store you, every day with just half a fish. <laughs> right. Half a fish. I get all these photos. Let me see your – And those oh, are some I of the luckier it. ones. And they they got some of them think it's kind of cool. Wow, we got shark. And then you sit there and look. God darn, man. It's just – there's – all the photos now are all half a fish. Yeah, I know. Half a fish, and it's not doing anybody any good. No. And and you, you've you got certain – you know, let's, let's talk about social media – for example, mm-hmm. a, as an influencer, like we talk about influencing, right? Let's talk about how social media influences yep. us. Brutal. You get this cute little girl that's going to come on. And she goes, I love my sharks. Protect all the sharks. You know, everything's wonderful. Everything's beautiful. Let's all live free. Let's, and it's like, yes, it, we it, need to it, do it, that. It, we it's, need, a, it's an education. The, that's an uneducated. You got to find that's a way to make this a universal type and education that cracks these barriers and explains what you know what is Crazy. happening. Yeah. Okay. If they're worried about that. Then you 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 show them the angle. Well, here we are. We're we're trying. We're the muttons are spawning. We're we're going to go for a limit, but it took us twenty muttons to go through to get or two or three whatever fish you wanted. The yeah. rest were eaten by sharks, and these are spawning aggregate. Now you're, there's, you're now there's the black ten boats group. around there doing right. the same thing, and, and they're all getting eaten by them. So look at the numbers of these bottom fish that are being taken out of that. Because mm-hmm. of this, you know, it, it, it's all about communication and education, and, and and that's where the expertise comes in. You have to get that message out that crosses so many barriers and show, okay, well, yeah, they, you know, hanging sharks up, this and that is bad because maybe they're not educated on how we've protected them so much that they're overtaking everything and how it impacts bottom fishing stocks, how it's impacting sailfish stocks, uh, and the damage it, it's doing because of us. You got to understand. Okay, we need to make another adjustment here. Every time that a human gets involved in trying to manage something, somehow a lot of it is good, but a lot of times we really screw up. Have the right statistics before you start doing. Yeah, this. I mean, hundred <laughs> percent. Mm-hmm. Don't just think. Oh, let's just shut this. And do that. Sure. That's right. The, it, it, it's. it's no, it's out of control. 
Yeah, over no doubt. over manipulation. I mean, it just, yeah, people, it's, people want to close areas down for what? There's no good no, that, that, reason no. to close it just because. Oh, and and, and it kills you because people want to close this area. So you got 300 boats here fishing. Now they can't fish here. So. You have 300 over here. Now you have 600 just destroying over here. So what's the purpose and, and of the closing pro- And here's the funny thing that. about it's it. We're not as smart as we think we are. No, and here's the afraid. problem with Harry's well, saying. You're you know fishing I mean? a dead yeah. piece of reef. So you, you have a no fishing zone on a reef that has maybe 1% still alive. What is that going to do? We're not at the level to where you regulate the fisheries. We're doing well now with the regulations we have intact and trying to keep a lot of these fish at sustainable levels, the groupers, the close seasons. And if we need to do more, then maybe we shut down a lot of these uh, fish during their spawning, spawning season. Seasons. But don't take away the angler's right to fish a spot. We've proven that sensible measures, you know, bag limits, size limits works. Mm-hmm. But the boomerang to all this is that now you have sharks that are – influencing that based on like we talked about earlier you're trying to catch your limit of muttons but but a lot of them are being eaten a lot of smaller ones are getting eaten by sharks on the way down so how many of those are you killing to get your limit because of the sharks now too so right but 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 the uh, closed reef situation or no fishing zones should only be used as an absolute last resort when everything else has proved to be unsuccessful and you need to do this to save that situation. Right. We don't need to call in martial law. No. No. You know, the best strange question segments are the ones where you forget that you're actually in the strange question segment. Right? And that, 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 was, that was like the long play version of strange questions right there. Yeah. I think we said may, might have set a record. Yeah, absolutely. So I am going to, let me see, you I'm going to ask the last one. Stuff, and I, it, listen, even this is uh, this is going to be a good one, but uh, I, I think the the I'm calling Debbie the winner. Oh, the, uh, hands down, she she really instigated a good conversation. Have you guys yeah. seen or heard of the episode I did with Tiny Walcott with the Rapscallion? I, I didn't hear it, but but I I, I heard through you uh, about that epic episode. Uh-huh. Like really, he told the whole story. Never saw that, it. That's it from Don't from know from it is. from cover to cover. Again, he told there's some things he did, he left out because he's got a book kicking, you know what I mean. But he he sat there and you're like, I had people messaging me like, oh my god, I was on the edge of my seat, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, so shout out to Tiny. He asks cool. a question today. So, who and why named the Poveromo Canyon off Miami? I. Uh- that was it. You go way back now, and man, he's got to be old too. You can't a lot of his, ans- lot of his answers now. go. You go way back yeah. now. They, they didn't have Papa Splora back then, so you're Harry's right. All right, back to Miami days. You know, and uh, you know, I was loved the offshore. I just did. You know, I grew up fishing Biscayne Bay, but my love was the offshore stuff, and that's what I had done. And I'd run my center console out haul over, no less. And the Poveromo Canyon starts south of there you know like you, you you start seeing that south of government cut and mainly going in the upper keys and i was a big troller and i would look for bottom structures and you know, you, you know you're looking back in the day you didn't have all the beautiful charts that show you where this stuff was at right yeah, so ran right paper machines <laughs> i noticed that we had this canyon draw. when i would run south i noticed it out of key largo and I noticed that it was way out of North Key Largo, so at a haulover, I would run down there a lot and would found this canyon, and I would troll. And it was a, a productive area to troll. We had a triple header of white marlin there. I've caught a couple more you know, whites out of there. We caught yellowfin tuna off of that canyon and, by trolling, too. And... Um, it, it was and, and again when weeds would come along in that area there it was also very good for dolphins so a lot of my trolling effort when we had the calm weather a haul over I would run to that canyon and that was in shoot a lot of the good fishing believe it or not when we were doing the whites would happen to be in August mm-hmm. and and that was I used to run down there religiously way back before they had anything that really showed you canyons and then, and then you looked in recent times that show the bottom contours, then you realize what you were fishing. But I had a map company that had called me up and, you know, and, and said, look, we've, we've got this thing. I noticed you fish down there a lot and 
you know, they asked me some questions about what I thought the canyon looked like and this and that. And they somehow, I don't know where they got it through Noah or whatever, but they had the bottom that showed where this canyon started. And they said, we're going to put these charts out. And they said, uh, you know, you fish there a ton and you talk highly about it. Would you mind if we nicknamed that or called it the Poveromo Canyon? So I said, no. I said, you know, and because and, I spent a lot of time Yeah, there. no, I don't yes. want you. No, you don't do that. Head. Don't do that at all. Don't. His head used to be really I want nothing to do with this. Now his head I want nothing to do with this. And that, that was a time where I had upsize, upsized the white visor size. I was after yeah. But no, and, 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 and that was actually when he said that question there, and, uh, and I don't know how he, he, he meant the question, but I, I took that as an honor because – Yo, I'm going Hell back yeah, to the did. late '70s with this stuff before you had the technology, and I, I, I saw that down there, and we had some hellacious catches. And um, you know, granted, I've not been down there, you know, trolling that way in, in recent times. But man, that that George, that, there's that a canyon awesome. of, of Earth underneath the water named after you. Yeah, yes, that's cool. and they had that charts, and those charts were out, and I think it's still called that. And and um, and I remember one time when they gave me the chart. I went in my garage, I call it my tackle garage, and on the back door to, to get out the garage, you know, I had it laminated. I actually had it posted up in there, and, and I did have the I incorpor- bet you did, and I wouldn't blame you for a, yeah. a second for doing it. No, and here's where I got shot down. I figured, you know, wow, we established the Poveromo Canyon. How cool is that? It, you know, to your efforts, and it, it was really an honor. So I'm thinking, you know, there's, there's a dollar to be made here. <laughs> And I called, I called the Florida DOT, Department of Transportation. I said, what does it take to have a, an offshore toll booth? That if anyone to go into canyon, they'd have to pay like $10 to come and fish that canyon. You know, oh, I got shot down. Yeah. I'm kidding about that. <laughs> but, but, but I wish I could have put a toll booth there and made some money on the deal. <laughs> that would have been great. All kidding aside, what, when you, yes. you wear fish gloves, I do wear fish what gloves. size do you wear? I don't know how they do the hand like size, large, like shoe size. Large. I don't know. I probably extra large to get some wiggle Take room. Take that here. extra large and grab some ice and put that in so I can. Man, look at that! There you go. Yeah, all right. Hey, he stole that. He stole that from one of, from people on the show. Oh, that was so I love it. He I just love it. put a twist on there. I love it. Uh, we have discussed. I have to do that to this guy. So thank you for the for the strange questions. We only yeah. asked three, but it took three hours yeah. to answer them. Um, Debbie. She killed it. S- sorry, oh. you you win. You know, well, I, I, I got to jump in here back after I, I, I take care of Harry. Yeah, here. no problem, no problem. Yeah, but there's a hole. In that we discussed. Time. That's <laughs> we, good. Whoa! I, you were going to say something before I before I bring this next thing up, so I'll, I'll refrain from what, what, what I was. What was saying. that now? What? No, no, no. You go ahead. Oh, yeah. you know, I just want to <laughs> jump in with 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 Harry Vernon, his dad. And like I said, that's where you know I was pretty much maybe immersed in the Vernon family back then, and his dad. So we're talking about the same thing, right? So what I was going to ask is we discussed a lot of heartache and heartbreak today. Yes. So describe to me how you guys met. Oh, well. <laughs> Police that station. Was my, that was my segue. FWC, we both right. got we arrested did. for So this fish. is kind of like the same <laughs> thing. He got thrown in jail, and he made me a custom license plate one time way back in there. Come on. No. How it, it really, it, you know, when I said, I, you know, in college, I come back, and I would, you know, go commute back to North Miami, and I'd swing by when they were on the river, and I saw the, this little smart aleck kid behind the counter but he was funny yeah, so yeah, somehow yeah. we just clicked and then uh when i had gone to work with saltwater sportsman 1983 they uh the miami billfish tournament recruited me to do to, to run the miami billfish tournament and we had a board of directors there and harry's dad was on that board so i worked with his dad and his dad uh, and i gotta tell you his dad was a Hard ass kind of a guy, which Harry oh, could probably, I mean, hard ass. He's not Compl- kidding. Compliments, he, he, you know, he'd rather give you a hundred dollar bill out of his pocket than give you a compliment, and he ain't going to give you a hundred dollar bill out of his pocket. He wouldn't give me either. <laughs> no, <laughs> he was a he was tough. He was a tough. I mean, he was a, a good, tough ass. Hard business. G- good guy. guy. Yeah, but a tough ass. And then uh, so we worked, and then when you were doing something wrong, or you boy, he'd be the first one to let you know. And uh, so then. We're on the board of directors, and then we would do the Miami Billfish Tournament. And then I met Harry. We started getting close because he would recruit him to help with the weigh-ins and this and that. And he was the only goofy, goof-off kind of guy that it I would like to. for free. 
Yeah, yeah we're for free, but <laughs> it was fun to hang beer. out with him. Hey, for you beer. And me both. For beer. Yeah, both. yeah because yeah. he was an escape. I, I do it for rum. From uh, all, I think it was like 15. Yeah. You were <laughs> somewhere in there. But all the, all the heavy <laughs> regimented deal. So he was funny. So that's where, you know, he and I started a relationship. But you go back to Harry, his dad. And, and I'll, I'm going to tell you a very important thing that you – I only talked about this a couple of times. And don't remind me to tell you this, but his dad – so it's a two things, you know, later on, you know, with the Billfish Tournament, when I left the Billfish Tournament and we started the uh, Saltwater Sports and Seminar Series, which ran, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's still running. And then the first year. 34 years. 34. And the first year I got my TV show. It's good. Okay. We got on ESPN. And this was when his dad was ailing and, and not doing well. And I would swing by the shop, the old shop, the. Um, you know, see Harry. Harry wasn't there one day. So I go up. I always say hello to his dad. And his dad was standing there, and he had that yellow shirt. And, he, and, he had, and he'd always be overlooking his windows to see who was trying to shoplift in his store. He was they almost like a statue, this guy should have been erected You got video, there. right? Yeah, and then he would I send me out. Him. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then I walk up. I go, Harry. Hey, George, how are you doing? I said, good. How are you? Good. And, and I knew he, he was having any heart issues. And he's looking out the window, and he turns to me, and I was like 20 feet away. I was getting ready to go downstairs because he wasn't around. And he goes, so I want to let you know something. I look up, go, what? You made it. I go, what? You made it. I go, I made what? The seminars, and you got the TV show. You made it. How did, I said, how do you figure I made it? You made it. And he went back to, to watching that. And I think, oh, my God, did Harry Vernon give me a compliment? Yeah. To this day, I'm so honored that approval, he right? that he yeah. gave me that. That weighs so heavily on me. That's, oh, my God, this critical guy had given me that compliment. It was like giving me a, a, a gold brick. Then, you know, before, you know, he, he had passed on, you know, a couple of times we chatted. And, he, he, you know, he he would make some little quick comments. He was, Keep an eye on him, meaning keep an eye on him. So I thought, well, there was a there was a another blessing that mm-hmm. was from Harry. Then after about a year, I realized that was a curse to keep an eye on this guy. So jeez, <laughs> but that's that, my buddy. But that yeah, he that was he, he, he got he had to end up with a handicapped guy. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm telling you, did I, did he get the last laugh on me? Well, <laughs> I got something to say about that. Though. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> you can win. All of the awards in the world for th- for anything that you do in your life professionally, right? Mm-hmm. But those moments are the ones that really. Matter. What his dad told oh, yeah. me was major. Uh, you know, those major. ones are the ones. And I've heard this before, so he, he, I, it's those obviously ones, it's in his mind, listen, which is really cool. I mean, if 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 I look at my career mm-hmm. and I look at like the ones, okay, there's been awards, and I'm not trying to say things like that, mm-hmm. but you, but. There have been moments where you'd get like, oh, like my first commissions that I ever sold, uh-huh. seventeen, eighteen years mm-hmm. old, were to Chad Barda. Mm-hmm. Wink of an eye, scruffy of the hair, you know, you're on your way, kid. Yep, that mattered more. Oh, than absolutely, the word, you know what like I mean? That, no yeah. doubt. You know, and, and then you, you look at all the different things like down the line. You cool know what stuff, I mean? George. Nothing for nothing. Mm-hmm. The fact that you've come on this show seven times for me has has been an award for me, you, and I mean that. I I, I, you, I, just, you know I, I mean? come for the Pilar. It's <laughs> no, but no, but I, no. I'm serious though. That's that's the truth though, George. Not enough Pilar here. For that. <laughs> it's the truth. You? No, <laughs> hey, hey, Holy damn man. it! You're stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at that. But it's the yeah. truth though. You no, know, I know it, it, it really I is. You know, from. like moments like that. But like, I enjoy like, this. No, I look at those stuff. as the benchmark. I enjoy this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know you do, and that's why. That's, that's, yeah, why, I, that's why, why I look at it. That's why I look at it. Hey, it's your accreditation, George. Those are the make it's to me. Yeah, and you know, to be what I mean, to be asked to come back by you, an incredible marine artist. You know that believe that's an honor to me to be here. It really is. 
And for me to do this for my first time? First time. <laughs> but well, let me circle you pop back my here. It's just great. <laughs> hey, before we dim the lights, put a slow song on and have some slow dancing oh, here. Let me, let me. Let me it's got the worst song. music on the boat that I've ever All right, heard in go, my go, life. Go. Oh, I hear he, he's going to. Was it, was it the, 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 what was the name of the band that stole Led Zeppelin song? Who knows? But, spirit. But whatever. The spirit. The spirit, spirit of the, of the sky. Spirit. Spirit. No. no it, it, by, <laughs> he doesn't like the music him. on the boat. I've never fallen asleep in my life more time standing up and driving <laughs> back with him and his boat. Because <laughs> I don't know where he comes up with this old crap. It's like whole Classic rock. God. I would, oh, no. It's classic it's bad. rock. How it's, could you argue against scary. classic rock? Oh, no. And he knows every song. He knows every one of them. Yeah. I and, listened a thousand times on my boat going out and coming feel, back in. I remember uh, I, I had made him snap. And I don't oh. know whether it was the the uh, Blue Marlin Cove trip or another Bahama trip or coming back. Oh, kill End of the day. So okay. many marlins, so many coves. Yeah. And, and, and you're running real right. fast, and all of a sudden, God, and I hear, God, man, turn that thing down. He says, I like to hear the yeah. water, yeah. the spray. I don't want to hear, I the hear yang, 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 some guitar. <laughs> so I, I, sat, I had to lower the thing, and he was snapping and on me. And we, then we did stop the boat. That, one, that was Pirate's Cove. Yes. And oh, yeah. we made it, our Papa's Pilar, and he oh. starts going, wop, he's going 60 no, miles an got, hour. I, I got my Mako, angle on. No, I'm and he's going, story and my this. drink's Did like, he set the e My off? drink is like, my hair's all wet. <laughs> did he fa- set the e off? No, he's and been I, known to do that. He did that, too. No. <laughs> but it's, my drink uh, is half gone, and it's all in my face, not in my mouth. Here's said, what happened. Stop the boat. Here's the true oh, story. It's terrible. We made it all the way back. This is after the victory. We got the we got. We, we got, had three we, yellow fins yeah, that day, get, but he got the big one in the boat. That cost me a gaff. To make, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. We talked about that. So we're hauling back. We're 47 miles, and we finally make that bend near Freeport to mm-hmm. get to Blue Marlin Cove. And Harry, stop, stop, stop. So I put the boat in the neutral. He goes, what are you doing, Harry? I make myself a Pilar. So I see him back there, and he puts some Pilar in a glass and the whole bit. He yelled, done? Yeah. And, and and he says, you know, I try to tell him, oh, stop, stop. It's what? He so you got a trolling lure? I said, put a couple trolling lures. Said, Harry, we are close to this. We're in this puke green water home. with all the freighters. Put them out. Why? Because I can't drink a Pilar when that boat is going. i got to sit and finish. So That's he right. had to finish his Pilar before I pulled the lines in so I could run again. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd t- and your drink just goes. <laughs> Harry. We didn't have lids. I want to go fishing with you. Oh, you'd have a blast. Oh, you'd, you'd have, have a blast. you got to come with us. That, you have a that, blast. That is, I guarantee you That's my time. speed right there. Whether we catch anything or not, you're going to yeah, have a good time. That's my, listen, I bring, on, I bring on the best of the best on this show. Uh-huh. I really do. It's a right? lot of fun. <laughs> right? But I tell you, that's my speed. It's good. Right? Well, so I know we go. keep talking yeah. about I, the I show. I make no bones hey, about it. We listen, keep talking about going the show. Chilling. We'll do it. We're going to get the – we'll do the four of us. We'll go out and we'll give you the show. But let me come back to very important thing that I've really only talked about at one other podcast before, and Harry's here as the witness. When I'd love to have you back on, by the oh, way. Oh, he's, he's really amazing. Love amazing. Sure. Fantastic. I'd love to. It'd be fine. Fantastic. Sure. Appreciate it. The Greater Miami Billfish Tournament, when I had come on, they brought me to go to work with that in 83. And um, you had the Greater Miami Billfish Tournament, then you had the Fort Lauderdale Billfish Tournament, and the Pompano Beach Rodeo. It was part of the Triple Crown, where these anglers to fish, and the biggest points, they'd win the Triple Crown. The problem was, it was all kill sailfish. Mm-hmm. So my first tournament that I, I run as a director was in '84, and between Miami and April, then you had Lauderdale after that, then you had Pompano. You're killing three hundred some odd sailfish over the over that 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 period, and I said, "This is not right." I'm with saltwater sportsman. You're promoting conservation, and and, and we would. I would bring up, we got to do release deals. And everybody on that board of directors, all the old timers, ah, oh, you're more selfish. You know what? You you couldn't get anything past them. So I did 84 with that, and I did 85. And, and I said, I said, something's got to change. This is ridiculous. We're killing all these selfish. And Daryl Lawrence from Lawrence Electronics was the major sponsor of those tournaments back then. He wrote Great a big guy. check. Great guy. And I happen to be very close with him because before I even got involved with running, you know, the tournament, he was involved with the Mako owners, and he would always come to me, and when we would field test all these new products and transducers. So we had a very good relationship, and he was a big conservation-oriented guy. And he was the big sponsor. So here we go for the 86 Billfish Tournament, 1986. And I'm fighting all these old timers, and Harry knows what I was up against. In there, you have these guys that oh. endless supply of ocean, the whole bit, and and so I told Daryl, I said, Daryl, you know, he already, 
you know, agreed to do the major sponsorship. I said, Daryl, look, I said, I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to enter a ploy here. I said, I need your support. He said, what's going on? I said, what we're doing with these tournaments is wrong. It is ridiculous killing these sailfish. They should be released. We need to be released. And not only stack it up, but they go into the guise of we're going to take these sailfish, we're going to smoke it, and give it to, you know, the poor. But what they do is they backdoor that to smoke fish markets, which are paying a premium for the sailfish. That's a whole other story. So all that was a disguise to where they would make even, not the tournament committee, but people involved with it. So I said, Daryl, I said, we got to make this. I'm going to call their bluff. And I said, I'm going to tell them that I spoke with you. And without you, they can't survive. And I said, I'm going to call their bluff. I'm going to say, Daryl Loran said, we need to go release. And if we don't go release, that you're pulling your sponsorship. Would you bet? He goes, absolutely. Thank you. We go to the meeting, committee meeting. And I said, I've got a very important announcement to make. I said, uh, Daryl Loran says, we need to go release. And they were in the sort of, oh, no, that's crazy. You can't do it. I said, look, stop yep. the bickering. I said, I need to call him in the morning. So you have to figure out right now whether we're going to release. And if fine, he's going to be with us. But if we're not going to go with a release. Find a new sponsor. Th- th- find a new sponsor. And I said, I had to let him know in the morning. He told me to call him at 9 o'clock. And they, blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, I don't want to hear the argument. What are we going to do? And they bitched and they moaned and they put it to vote. We'll figure out we're going to go release. So I called Daryl and said it, it worked. So because of Daryl's effort and back of me, we converted the Miami Billfish to a release. We the put first. The, the first one. First, first one. We put the pressure on that to Lauderdale, forced them into a release tournament, and forced Pompano to occur back to where they eventually got, they changed theirs around to where they wouldn't be killing all these sailfish. So because of Daryl Lawrence and the ploy, that we did uh, converted the whole face of South Florida sail fishing tournaments with those three big tournaments back in the day. And that, that was sort of an unknown deal other than Harry knew yep. and, and some of the other, and, and anybody who was on the board knew about that. But it, it, is I had gone to Daryl and um, did we that. did that deal. Once again, this That's has cool. been a history lesson. Yeah. With George Barbara. Cool. Outstanding. And, but but there's a no, Harry no, Vernon. No, no, I love, I love this cool is the stuff. thing. I but love there's a Harry hearing Vernon, the genesis Harry, of these Harry Vernon Sr. story here. Oh, is there? Is He's there. on a board of directors. So the first tournament release, people are going to cheat, and they say you've got to pass polygraphs. We had attorneys write the deal. Part of the way to win, you had to release the most sailfish, but you and your team had to pass the polygraph. Like that was a stipulation. The first year that we did release was the lowest catch record in all Miami Billfish tournament history. Second year, the, the cheating started. Lauderdale got befuddled. They had an October or fall tournament. And they called me up and said, hey, these guys cheated. And I see that they're entered in Miami. Watch it. I said, why didn't you disqualify them? We didn't want to get lawsuits. And also, they chickened out. you have out. observers then? No. No, not back then. We didn't have observers. For a no. release? No. No, this, this was, was before all release. We <laughs> had we had observers. Bless you. That's we later had observers, years. But that was later years. Yeah. But in the original, we you had, had to pass to have, a polygraph because exam. Because yeah. Things that was happening. Oh, all polygraph. Yeah. Yes, that was wow. part of the deal. So it's honor system technically. Yes, and the first year we had the lowest lowest uh, catch. So we knew about the boat getting ready to cheat coming yeah. in Miami, and all of a sudden he cheats. Says he releases a white marlin and all these sailfish. I had yeah. another boat calling and said, I'm watching him. He's calling his release. He's more points for that. Yeah. So Yes, and a blue. And they figured because they intimidated. And a blue. Yes. Oh, why not throw a blue, blue in there? Oh, yeah. Sure. And because they intimidated Lauderdale <laughs> in the fall, they figured we're going to intimidate the Miami crew. They're not going to get disqualified because we'll sue them. And sure enough, I said, all right, we need everybody off that boat. Polygraph exam time. So we're at the Biscayne Bay Marriott. They bring him in. Is the captain? There was a uh, a mate and a captain's son, I believe. And I never thought much about polygraph exams, an accuracy or anything like that. I figured, you know, until the polygraph examiner brought me in and said, "Let me show you something." He laid these tapes out. Here are the questions we asked, and everybody that mountain went to this peak down here. This peak, I said, "Oh my God!" That's when I got scared. I said, "These things are pretty accurate." So I went back out to them, and I said, we want to see you guys again, another retest. And we did it again. And we got Harry, and the committee said, we got to make a call here. These guys cheated. 
oh, we got to stick by the guns. And fortunately, we had some attorneys that were on the board. So I said, oh, right, I'm going to talk to them and let them know we're going to give them an easy way out. You say, hey, we did this. We're going to pull, we'll, we'll make it easy on you. And, and, and then the, the owner of the boat got defiant. No way. We're going to fight this and that. And I said, all right, I'm letting you know because the press was out here. The press knew that we had a situation. I said, is your last chance? No. Told the press we have a disqualification. They failed to pass the polygraph exam. So then we brought the owner of the boat in with the committee. And the owner of the boat's kid was out front the front door. He he was, I don't know, he, we had to get the, his father's signature for him to take the polygraph because he was under 18. He's sitting out there at the front door like, like that. Like the guy was like soaking wet. Like he was going to do a lot of damage. So we go in here and we're sitting around. And then all of a sudden the owner of the boat starts attacking his dad. Harry! You know me, I've been a big customer in your store. How could you sit there and say that I lied? And Harry was smart enough. See, he was trying to put the word liar in the equation for legality. Right. And his dad was sharp. Look, we, we the rules state you got to pass the polygraph, and they're showing us that you didn't pass the polygraph. You didn't, and he kept, he kept trying to get his dad to say that you call me a liar. He said, look, I'm saying you didn't pass the polygraph. So his dad was smooth enough to get around that, and everybody on the committee was sharp enough, and he was bitching, so he goes storming out. And Harry says, he keeps telling me he comes to my shop. He does, but I catch him shoplifting all the time, too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he told me. I know who it was. Oh, no. You know who yeah, it was. Exactly oh, man. Was. So finally, he got busted big time for cheating, the too. best here was that the mate that they had in the boat was starting to crack. He was a Florida Power and Light employee. He comes over, and he's crying, a grown man crying. George, look. I didn't want to do it. They got me in. Look, I got a career at FPL. I, I can't afford yeah, to get fired. You I got said, a family. Why did you, you don't want to ruin why it. Why did you lie? Why did you lie? I yeah, did. And he said, and he said, please take my name. I can't take your name out. We gave you the opportunity. It's it. It's over. He lied. And the Herald did a piece. And it turned out <sighs> oh, that that no. guy worked in the same division as my close friend in FPL in the Broward, the same grouping. And he says, oh, my God, that guy was getting rained. But, you know, when you would come and park your cars and your trucks in, in the at FPL lot and they get on the big FPL trucks to go work, people be on there and they call that guy up and he'd answer, how many selfish releases you got <laughs> now? Oh, no. And they said it got so bad oh, that they came back guy. one day and he, the guy went to get his pickup truck at the FPL lot. They put extendo tubes on his mirrors like outriggers and, and somebody at FPL had a, come on. had a box made, a lot, like, an, like a lie detector box. Up, you failed, and the guy complained to FPL, so he got hammered. Oh, poor guy. Wow. But that, so little, did you know, the history of South Florida tournaments was because of Daryl Lawrence and what yeah. we pulled back in the day to, to make, make it, it what it is today. Which is a good thing. I want, a good thing. I, I want to say something <laughs> about um, a couple of things about everything you talked about with, with the kill tournament mm-hmm. aspect of it. Um I don't want everyone to think that if we're taking the stance on sharks that we're taking, that we have the mindset of kill them all. Because mm-hmm. we absolutely don't. That's that's not the mindset. That's I right. Don't, I don't, don't want, want people to think that that's the angle that we're playing this at. That it completely not educate yourself. Right. Okay. Nothing could be further from the truth. Mm-hmm. Because that, that the story that you just said proves that. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, secondly... I want to give a special mention to the Papa's Pilar family mm-hmm. and their stance on kill tournaments and how it's been an inspiration to me being associated with this company, and I'm sure for you guys as well, that their their staunch stance on their association with kill tournaments and or non-association with mm-hmm. kill tournaments um, and their ability to just draw the line in the sand on that mm-hmm. um, ha- has been great, I think, and, and you, for yes, the industry. No doubt, and you need the leaders like scene. that to do it. Yeah, because you need leaders, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, and to, to the point where they won't sponsor a tournament that's a certain percentage of sure. kill and everything like that. So, And so I want to really kind of put that out there. Mm-hmm. So when sure. we mention... The shark situation. Just keeping it I don't in want, balance. Yeah, I don't want right. that to reflect on on Pilar because no, I, I, I no, think that, that it's, it's not, not a kill them all scenario. No, nope. and I don't think anyone looks at it 
that way. Right. So I, I just want to really put it out that because we could not be more proud of our association mm-hmm. with that company, who they are, oh, and, awesome. and the, the genetic makeup and philosophical understanding of what that company represents. Right. Because it's more than just a rum company. And I think we all understand Good that at sure. this table. It right? is. It, it really is. People. Big supporters. Um, that's why like, we're excited about that relationship yep. with them. Um, it's because they get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there for, for whatever it's worth. Um, now, now so. can I throw something out there? Go for just, it. Please uh, do. It's just, this is just a funny thing because. Oh, please do. <laughs> Lord knows <laughs> we need a, it right now. <laughs> conservation, all the crazy stuff and everything. And uh, this is, goes back to one of our shows. And it was over in Treasure, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And we have, obviously, he's got his boat and he's got a camera boat. So I've got my camera boat that I run across with. He's got his boat. And we get over there. It was one of the worst fishing trips it was, we've ever had. Yes. They had a tournament in Treasure. Not one blue marlin was caught. Wow. Not one. And we trolled and trolled. Beautiful weather. Gorgeous. I couldn't couldn't ask for better better weather. Better weather. Better weather. Thank you, Papa's The Polar, Polar does that. You know, every now and then he needs so to get on that hooked on phonics. Uh, yeah, the so, last 20 minutes right. of the show usually so, goes like that. It was, it was good. Uh, we we tried to catch it. It was like the third day or second day. I started feeling sick. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, go, I don't feel yeah, good. I know this whole day. And he goes, yeah, Harry, suck it up, whatever. <laughs> well, I come back the next morning. I was like deathly ill. I, I couldn't. I, t- I told Joy, yeah. I, I can't fish. I'm sick. Something's wrong with me. I can't breathe, whatever. He's like, what do you want to do? I said, I got to fly home. Uh, That's how bad I was, which takes a lot for me to do anything. You could almost kill me. And I get to the airport even. They drop me off and throwing up at the airport. And then you got to sign this thing. Are you sick? <laughs> no. I'm like, no. no. Just hung, just hung <laughs> over. Just yeah. get me on this airplane, man. I'm yeah. out of here. So, needless to say, I had the flu. And a pneumonia. I had pneumonia. So, I come home, whatever. So, I leave George, obviously, in charge, which he normally is with everything. And then I've got my boat over there, which I have a good friend of mine, Craig Hardy, firefighter, who's a the guy's a great guy. Well, they wrap everything up. I'm in, I had to go to the hospital. I get out of the hospital, whatever. And all of a sudden, I, 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 I get these pictures. I'm like, what are these pictures of? I'm talking about blackmail. <laughs> oh, okay, I know where we're going now. So it, this was, I thought it was awkward. Now, you definitely, we, you definitely oh, need to release the film. He will if he still oh, yeah. has them. So, I burned mine. Yeah, so, so George and I have fished a lot. We fished throughout the Bahamas, uh, all over the place, some really cool places. <laughs> We've never had an issue except hit by lightning. Yes. But other than that. I heard that story. Everything was cool. So I'm looking at these pictures, and I'm like, are you kidding me? You guys? I look at this photo, and I see George in knee-deep of water trying to push his boat off the sandbar. I see my boat in <laughs> knee-deep of water trying to push off the sandbar. I'm like, here my, I was like, no way in hell. These guys just ran. Both of them could. It was pouring down rain. I'm going to give it. It was it was torrential. It was the worst weather you could ever want to come back in to come back in. And I'm looking at these pictures with both boats like this oh, up no. on the sandbar. And I got the pictures somewhere. I wish I could find them. And it was hilarious. But that was one of the funny things that I wasn't even involved with. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I still thought it was funny to see you my better, boat like this. You're better off. You flew home. And we I tried like, to take a well, shortcut. Well, no, we would have never ran aground. We tried to make oh, a shortcut yeah. instead of going memory rock. And, and, I, and I'm looking <laughs> at the charts. And back then, the charts that you had, <laughs> obviously, maybe some of them weren't all that accurate. But I'm looking. I see, no, it's a little skinny, but we've got enough water that we could cut this amount of miles off and go through here. <laughs> miles, and, and, but not hours. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. yeah. So I said, okay, well, these charts are usually made on you no know, low tide. So, so, you know, we're up and running. Yeah. We should be able to do this thing. So let's try it. So we're, we're doing it. I'm going on a path, and it's telling me I've got enough water. I've got three feet or so, you know, low tide. You know, we're, we're running. Charts are made on low tide. No, we're, huh? Charts are made on low tide? I believe That's they are. That's what he was I never told. Yeah. Hey, mine might have been opposite day. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. And I'm driving there. It's the first time I ever tried to cut that, that distance off. But we've done and, it before with when I was on the boat. I don't know if we got that tight. But anyway, I'm running. I'm <laughs> looking. Tight. And I'm starting to see bottom. And, and I said, oh, what the, he's going by the chart. 
And then, okay, there's a conch here, and there's a <laughs> land <laughs> crab. There's a watermelon over here, and I said, yeah. you know, and Just all of a saw sudden, a horseshoe crab. Yeah. And, and I'm looking. I said, well, the deeper water's a little bit to my right. And all of a sudden, you're 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 running, rah, 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 and you're starting to kick mud. And I said, the last thing you want to do is back off. I said, I'm hooking and, and hammering the throttles, get up higher, and I do that, and I and I get a little deeper water, but I'm still bogging. So all of a sudden, damn. How did this happen? <laughs> so here comes the camera boat. Same here comes thing. the camera boat. <laughs> <He bogs>. Documenting <laughs> everything. He bogs. So here we are, pouring down rain. We're trying to push these boats out to deeper water, and eventually we did get it, but that was a uh, – you want to talk about a, an all-day deal. And plus, we had the boats we I left out of Key Biscayne yeah. at the Yacht Club. Right. So we're coming from Treasure, okay? Then by the time we, we, we get off the uh, – the, the farmer's watermelon grove, and we got back to somewhat deeper water. We still had to run all the way down to Key Biscayne. We got in there at, at dark, the whole bit, and uh, yeah, that was. Uh, He's uh, telling my buddy, "Don't say a word. Don't say anything." You talk my about a bad trip, and that was one that where was we even trip. went yellow tailing and couldn't get the tails up. Every yeah. whatever it was, was really. Just so we found a, a, a nobody a, could catch. What fish. about we, we found that big thing floating, floating way out there, like like a mini we're raft. Crush it. I said we see the distance. Oh my God, we're we're fifteen miles offshore. We're right. going to crush. And then you Not see yellowfin tuna running through there with a gaff stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I wish we saw that. That would have been a bonus. It was and kind of weird. These guys were waving on the raft, and he just kept going. I don't know why yeah. he did. Have, there was no dolphin under there. Yeah, there's no dolphin. No, come on. The guys on the raft caught them all. Yeah, right, there you go. They ate them, too. So that was, that was definitely, without a doubt, it was, uh, that was, that was a, a moment. That was a moment. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's one of the times I won't let him live, live that one down. Holy moly. Thank you, guys, <laughs> like for running today. Like Thank you so much. Oh, it was, wow, it was fun. Fun. I can't wait to come yeah, back. Fun. You're that crazy yeah, well, to absolutely. have us back. <laughs> we need a part two. Yeah. Come on. We're ready. We're ready. I think Captain Harry may have just told us that it's his first podcast just to kind of, you know, yeah, lower his handicap it. or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, I got a lot more stories. Yeah, he does. Good or yeah, bad, we'll, we'll, yeah. We're, we're definitely going to bring you in for, for a part two and part yeah. three, four, five, six, and seven. No, and this talk was about a lot that. of fun. Yeah. So, um, Cool deal. Free flowing. No topic. And I love how this one ended mm-hmm. up. I mean, re- really, I mean, Great there's deal. no paper in front of me. I had three questions on a text message, and here we go, right? We made the best <laughs> I don't like guys. those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for ah, coming thank in you. today it's and, and love just it. sharing. Beautiful place. Sure. Thank Great you. Great to be here, man. Thank Holy you. cow. Congratulations on your new place. I appreciate that. Everybody should Greatly. come in and check it out. Really. Yeah, thank you. Um, we got to give a shout out uh, when you guys walked in. This one is of, it, our, it, one of our sponsors, oh, right? We get, this is Joey Cordy Dodge. So he, yeah, he calls this. Uh, <laughs> calls this is church announcements. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's the last one. <laughs> it's the last line he gives you. All of a sudden, I, I look, I, I, the last time I was in church had been like 40-some years ago. I can't get in your church. I get hit with lightning oh, now. But here. but it sounds like, the, yeah, you too. It sounds like the last line he delivers say, here, yeah. I'm waiting to go up for a Holy Communion or something well, like that. Well, uh, I got to get my announcements in, right? So uh, when you guys were in, you met Joey Cardi. Yeah, he was yeah, here today. Was cool, right, right, right when. Um, and I need a truck, so perfect copy <laughs> right there. There you go. You go down Atlantic, you make a left on Federal, and it's right there on the right. There we go. It's just it's it's a crow's mile from here. No not doubt, e- not even. He's been a, he's been a very good sponsor years and a big name in the area. So there's no doubt. Yeah. Now, do we segue into Dennis Friel, uh sushi roll now? Is yeah. That, we well, well, no, well, 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 not yet, <laughs> not, yet not yet, So, <laughs> Joey Cardi Crestor, not cheap ram of Pompano Beach, Florida. Go see Dean. Tell him that I sent you, and there he's going to give you a good deal. That, that's the Perfect. that's the short version of that. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to make these condensed today. So, um, well, if you're hungry, though, yep, right, you got to go to Papa's Raw Bar. That's and, it, and order something off the, the Dennis uh, Real Roll, the Connected by Water oh, Sushi they have Menu. A roll right? named after him? Yeah, no way. Well, well, the What's whole menu it? is what named. Is yeah, after, the whole menu. The whole menu is connect, the Connected by Water Sushi Menu. They're actually going to be in here tomorrow to do a feature on the studio. Really, yes, awesome. They are. They are that is so nice. cool. Absolutely, one hundred percent. So we're looking very much forward to that. Um, but more importantly, if you're thirsty, Papa's Pilar. Oh, right. That's, a, du- that's a, a, cheers, a dual sponsorship right. here. Yeah. You know, right. got to take go. care of Papa's. Got to get bigger cups though. <laughs> <laughs> Without holes at the bottom. This thing had, it keeps leaking at yeah, the bottom. We, we keep, we keep complaining to uh, you know? to management yeah, of the cups guys. that they're sending us. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, so cool deal. if you need tackle, Captain Harry's, and you're in Miami or in close Miami. to it, head support on down to Captain small Harry's family right, business. Right, is the way I look absolutely at it. listen. Support your business. If if, if uh, you know you want friendly and knowledgeable service, head over to Captain Harry's. Right, they got a really cool guy working there named Brian. Yep. That That's I want to give a shout out to. He's good. a very good friend of mine. He knows what he's talking about. I notice what he's very doing. knowledgeable, right? right? And um, George, do you want to do a plug for? Absolutely, got to have Bass deal. Pro. Yeah, right. We're back right. to the Ford versus yeah. Chevy deal, yeah. and <laughs> Bass Pro has been a, a wonderful major Dodge. sponsor of mine for a long, long, long time. And like I said, when we get out in the business aspects, he's racing for Harry. I'm racing for Bass Pro. But when the race is all done, no matter who wins, we get together and have Pop a cold Papa's Pilar. <laughs> and, and like buddy. I said, it, 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 it goes beyond all boundaries here. Harry's been uh, like a family member. Again, we grew up in Miami. There's a, just a lot of history between us. And he's uh, just, a, just a fun individual to be with. Sometimes he drives you crazy like no other person can, but it's all good, you know? Life ain't worth living unless you got someone that's oh, willing it's to the drive best. you crazy. And our, our, I got to tell you, our, the TV episodes that we've shot together, I don't know how many we've done, Cops. but they always turn out to be six or seven. Yeah, it's got to be at least. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. over over the twenty two years of TV, they always few. turn out to be among the top rated episodes. If people look at that; it's a whole other thing. It's like the George and Harry show. It's like these two old guys, old guy comics. One of them's going to yeah. kill one of them. Yeah. It, it's like a it's like a whole other element of a right. funny so, type so, deal. So that, you see that, what that, I'm getting at here? Right? It just rates. It just rates well for watch, whatever right? reason. Line? <laughs> One of us is going to kill each other. Yeah, <laughs> just who's going to kill who by accident? <laughs> I want to give a special shout out to ACR who reminds you that this is science of survival. Sure. Yeah, what's going to get you there ACR. at the end of the Definitely. day? Sure thing, right? If if you don't have an EPIRB, then why not? Uh, you should have an EPIRB. Okay, please. God, you, you know what I mean? Just just get that over with. If you you know get yep. that part of your life past you and yep. get that product please Such a simple get thing that on your boat save That's your it. life no doubt your about it at the end of the day it could mean everything um i want to give a shout out to our good friends at olakai and our good friends at maui gym great mm-hmm. um and and uh, the continuous support that they give the studio super um we are conveniently located at the taha marine here in pompano beach florida we're proud of everything that the taha family does for this community we are connected by water right Always. And we are a show that brings you weekly um, the best of the best, and we certainly did that today. Uh, I so, hope so. Uh, I don't know about oh, that. It was, it, it, was, it was a good one, I think. It was a, good, yeah, a lot of fun. 100%. 100%. Now, now, is it this day, the ending church part Yeah, now? so any closing, here, here, closing here, 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 announcements here goes, before, here, right? here goes the, before Zen the church part, the Zen part now. Here we go. Ready? Go your ego is not your amigo. Always do your best, and remember at the end of the day, just let God do the rest, and don't ever forget that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we are always connected by water.